The following is a presentation of The Day. On a beautiful fall day, a new sport gets its day in the sun. Live from Mohegan Sun, it's the Day of Volleyball Invitational, and it's all live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that is good begins with a smile, and when you visit our office, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you the personalized dental care that you deserve. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. Casey O'Neill along with Madison Canistrary, and it is a pleasure to have you here today as we have our first ever day volleyball invitational. Four teams starting off with Ledger, your alma mater, and Lyman Memorial in girls volleyball. And uh, as a former volleyballer, what do you think it means to play in an arena like this? This is honestly huge. This is something that most girls in high school don't get an opportunity to do unless you're playing club at a very high level or if you're in the USA Volleyball Pipeline. Um, it's huge. I mean, you have bright lights, the depth perception is different. It's going to be a lot of adjustment for all of them. Like, your ceiling's even higher, so you can pass higher. Like, Ledger, I'm sure you've seen the gym. You hit the ceiling. Like, ceiling tiles break during practice and they fall down. Like, it's a very old gym, so this is going to be different for them to be able to pass high. Well, talk about that for a minute. You know, you played college volleyball. You've played, uh, you know, on a tour where there's, you know, crowds and arenas. And, you know, most of these girls, uh, the vast majority of them, will not have played in, in an arena this size with lights like this. How long does it take, forget the emotional part, just physically, how long does it sort of take to adjust to those kind of surroundings? Um, I mean, it differs for everyone. But warm-ups is obviously, like, a really good time to get your feet wet and adjusted. But I would probably think like the first set for both teams is definitely going to be an adjustment and then coaches will call timeouts and say hey like think about this or do this different um so i would say the first set might be it could go either way if they're lyman comes in at eight and four ledger at six and seven and as we get ready for the start let's turn it over to our pa announcer bill glennie Game number one tonight features the Lima Memorial Bulldogs and the Colonels of Ledger High School. Your officials for tonight, referee number one, Tom Digaviani and Sergio Lewis. Your linesmen, Sue Patria and Shelly Miller. Before we introduce tonight's lineup, we would like to direct your attention to the big board for the day's presentation of today's players. Ariana Garcia, Lebanon Elementary. Mia Atardi, Lebanon Elementary School. Nina Gardella, Lebanon Elementary. Jenny Lopez, Lebanon Elementary School. Laura Lynn Bohr, Charles H. Barrow STEM Academy. Avery Brooks, Lebanon Elementary School. Cassidy Latour, Fields Memorial School. Casey Gelati, Lebanon Elementary School. Erica Arfin, Killingly Memorial. Rowan LaFleur, Lebanon Elementary School. Harley Daron, Lebanon Elementary School. Jasmine Contreras, Lebanon Elementary School. Riley Benway, Fields Memorial Elementary School. Farley Johnson, Fort Shafter Elementary School. Emily Peckham, Ledger Center School. Kylie Gill, Ledger Center School. Lauren Cully, Gales Ferry Elementary School. Grace Haydash, Ledger Center School. Megan Tabraham, Hope Valley Elementary School. Kira Opalenic, Home School. And I appear in A Boogie Academy. <laughs> Layla Lissisimphone, Ledger Center School. Lindsay Davies, Gallupel Elementary School. Kaylee Clyatt, Gales Ferry Elementary School. Grace Bush, IDCS, and you're watching Disney Channel. All right, fans, here we go. The visiting Bulldogs dropped its last game Friday night, currently 8-4 and four on the season. They are up next on Wednesday night as they host Plainfield at 5.30. The head coach of Lyman is Miss Emily Vigue. Her assistant is Ron Vigue. Bulldog fans, put your hands together. Let's meet your team. 
The reserves, number six, a sophomore, Jenny Lopez. Number eight, sophomore, Laurelyn Boyer. A freshman, number 11, Casey Galati. A sophomore, number 15, Rowan LaFleur. A senior, number 17, Jasmine Contreras. And a junior, number 24, Riley Benway. And your starters at Libero, senior number one, Ariana Garcia. A senior, number three, Mia Atardi. A senior, number four, Nina Gardella. A junior, number nine, Avery Brooks. A senior, number 10, Cassidy Latour. A sophomore, number 13, Erica Arpin. And a senior, number 16, Carly Darone. The home side Colonels swept killingly Friday night, enter tonight with a record of six and seven. They head out on the road Wednesday for a 5.30 match at Bacon Academy. The head coach of Ledger is Mr. Jeff Cummings. His assistant is Eleni Balestrini. Stand up, Colonel Crew, time to meet your team. The reserves, number 21, senior Lindsey Davies. Senior, number eight, Lauren Cully. Senior, number 25, Kaylee Clyett. Junior, number six, Kylie Gill. And junior, number five, Emily Peckham. Your starters at Libero, number one, senior, number one, Briley Johnson. Senior, number 10, Grace Haydash. Senior, number 11, Megan Tabraham. Junior, number 13, Kira Opalenik. Senior, number 16, Anaya Pearson. Senior, number 17, Layla Lassissimphone. And senior, number 24, Grace Bush. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's anthem is being performed by the Ledger High School Chamber Choir under the direction of Miss Melanie Cometa. Ladies and gentlemen, the Leisure High School Chamber Choir.
great job, of course. Ledger High School Chamber Choir, the national anthem. A little shout out to the Lyman Memorial Bulldog student section as they have brought the blue. And we are moments away from getting this underway. Ledger coming in at six and seven. And Madison, you know, it's funny because trying to figure this game out, we're trying to figure Ledger out. Uh, a little erratic start, you know, they uh, were three and two and then they lost five straight and then they rebound and win three straight. Um, but if you look at the losses, Bacon, Griswold, Waterford, East Lyme and Valley, all teams above 500, all teams, uh, you know, highly competitive. And they come back with a big win at Fitch and then a big win against Cromwell and Killingly. So Ledger, despite the six and seven record, has won three in a row. Lyman, on the other hand, coming in, multiple state time, you know, state champion uh, coming in. And they had been pretty much, they lost to Bacon, they lost to Griswold, who are two of the best teams in the league. But back-to-back -back losses to East Lyme and Waterford, really kind of hard to figure out where these teams are. are you know, is Ledger, has Ledger figured it out and, and turning it around? Is Lyman struggling? And so this game, uh, anything goes. Right. I don't know, maybe they came back. I heard Jeff Cummings lost a vet, and that's why he's wearing a suit. The girls asked him if they played well this past week, would he wear a suit to this? So, three wins, he's wearing a suit. Ledger with the serve, the system foam got it over, and now. And our first point of the game goes to Lyman Memorial. Lyman Memorial sends out its libero, Ariana Garcia, along with Mia Tardy, Nina Gardella, Avery Brooks, Cassidy Latour, Erica Arpin, and Carly Darone. And serving for Lyman will be Carly Darone, the senior. Our first oh, rally of the set. game, nice set. Going far side. And a, up, oh, stuffed at the net. Latour came in for the power, tried for the kill on the Lyman side, but Ledger was there for the block, and now the Colonels will have the serve. Briley Johnson, Grace Haydash, Megan Tabraham, Kira Opalenik. Lassism Foam, Pearson, and Bush, the starting lineup for Ledger. And a nice play from Lassism Foam. So tell me again, is this a dink, a dunk? What do we what do we call when we just when we just kind of pop it over the the net? We don't spike it, we just kind of you know, pop it. Did she have both hands up? It might have been a, it was a just bit one. of a soft block. I couldn't. Yeah. I had to move my chair a little bit. <laughs> Little, little uh, strong on the serve, and we're tied at two. And the serve will turn over to Lyman. Erica Arpin, only a sophomore, will serve for the Bulldogs. Oh, nice job by Johnson for the Colonels, and Johnson gets it over the net as well. Nice little jump set. Anaya Pearson with the kill for Ledger, and it'll take the 3 2 lead and retain the serve with Riley Johnson. Now, are all liberos just like peppy? <laughs> because <laughs> I've met like four, and they are all like absolutely energetic beyond, you know, words, and Riley Johnson is certainly. She is a uh, leader on this team. Honestly, yeah, I feel like that is a character type of them, just because they are the ones, the leaders in that back row. They're the ones that are defensively supposed to be the best on the court. That's why they have that different colored jersey on. So they kind of own it. Great serve by Gardella. Ledger setting it up now, far side. Or actually near side. And a big hit by Grace Bush, putting it away for the Colonels. Grace Bush with the kill. 
Wow, hard diagonal. Probably may have gone out of bounds, but that's got to be tough to tell when that ball is sinking so hard. You know, that little bit of top spin, it might have dropped on that back line. Ledger sub, Emily Peckham into the game. She gets the serve. It goes out of bounds, tying us at four. Cassidy Latour now with the serve for Lyman. Near side. And a strong hit put away Lyman Carly Darone. Yeah, Ariana Garcia did a great job stepping in as that libero taking that second set. Set her up perfect. Back and forth here in the early going. 5-4 Lyman. Latour will continue with a serve. And that goes long. And I have a feeling that, you know, we were talking a little bit about what we were going to see today, and I think this might be what we're going to see today, which is back and forth. Um, both teams, you can tell in the early going, both teams uh, kind of feeling each other out, but you can just see from the style of play that both teams are going to be in this. Uh -oh. Nice job. She stayed with it, though, got it over. And a point there as Ledred was over the net. Oplenik was over the net, and the point will go to Lyman. They take the 6 5 lead. And Atardi will serve for Lyman. Nice job by Johnson. The set. And a put away, Lyman with a little run now. They take a 7-5 lead. Take a look at this. Nice job coming up and putting it away. rally hit out of bounds and the biggest lead of the game little three run here and Lyman up 8-5 and Atardi will maintain the serve the chant of MIA for Mia Atardi four straight by Lyman and a little miscommunication that time from Lyman will get the ball back over to Ledger Kira Opelenik will serve. And that's going to be back to the Lyman side of things. So right now, Lyman has been uh, going, it appears anyway, Lyman has been sort of challenging that soft back. The deep corner, yep. Grace did a great job of covering, unfortunately, no one up here had it. Near side, and the hit by Darone sails long. And Ledger will have the serve. And we see the system foam come back into the game. She replaces Clyett, and the system foam will have the serve. And that serve goes long. Lyman doing a really nice job uh, talking in the back. Those They've let a lot of balls sail deep. Yeah, and you'll see that another thing with the arena. People are adjusting with their depth perception. They're thinking that they have to hit it a little bit harder. And now you're seeing on both sides a little bit of, even that one might have dropped out. Balls are sailing deep on serves. And Ledger couldn't keep it in. Johnson did a great job, but she couldn't keep it in. Ledger, three service errors already at this point. And, you know, Talk a little bit about uh, what you will continue on the point that you were just making about sort of the, your depth perception and, and adjusting to the, you know. Right. So these girls have 
so much room that they can move back, take another step back if they're hitting it as hard as they are. Um, again, Ledger's gym, very small. A lot of these girls have their backs up against the basketball pads trying to serve just to get it over the net. Or they have a lot more room. They just need to adjust to this bigger playing space. They can pursue. They can really go for whatever they want. Good rally here. Great coverage. Lyman coming near side. Ledger digs. Back again. They're trying to set up Latour. Now Ledger with Pearson. And a nice job. Anaya Pearson puts it away for the Colonels. Beautiful turn to the left. Middles a lot of the times like to hit dominant arm right to right. She would turn that right past that block. And good vision. Good, that's well done. Right into that open spot. Gets it back for Ledger. Nice serve. And a big hit by Latour sails long. And Ledger chipping away back in it here now. They'll maintain the serve. Just long. Tabraham with the serve, and there's another service error. And I, I think if anything from Coach Cummings right now, it's it, you know, service errors are what's they're right. down three, and that's their fourth service error. Right. Make those in, it could be what, eight thirteen? Arpin with the serve for Lyman. Johnson. Latour and Ledger will reset. They're going to go back. And a nice job as Bush was denied at the net, and Lyman will come away with it. You see Bush calling for it, but she just went right into the net with it. And now the Biggest lead, I believe, yep, four points. Let Lyman 13-9. I think we're gonna get a timeout here from Ledger and Jeff Cummings, and this timeout was brought to you by the Burns Agency. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Lyman with the early lead, a timeout for Ledger, and it's really been unforced errors. As you see here, Ledger just not really in sync. Some service errors, some uh, missed opportunities at the net, some lack of communication. How do you tighten that up, and what do you think Coach Cummings was saying in that timeout? I think he's probably just telling them, settle down, it's still early. I mean, if they, what, four service errors already, if they just clean that up alone, you're back in this game. So coming out of the timeout, let's see what happens. Arpin with the serve for Lyman. I like, already like that hit from Haydash. Oh, beautiful job, yeah. Riley Johnson for Ledger. And a st stuff at the net, Anaya Pearson. Yeah, she's doing a great job being up with everything. As a middle hitter, it's like, you're jumping constantly throughout the entire game. She's right there with every one of those hitters. Yeah, put that one right back. More important than the point, it gets the serve back to Briley Johnson, the libero for Ledger. And I know she wants that one back. That's a miss hit right there. That one you can see sailed up a little high on her palm. Where on your, where on the on the hand do you want that serve to be? So your whole hand. If you want that nice float serve, you keep your wrist nice and flat. Whole hand contacts that ball. That top spin, you won't see it as much in high school, where they'll throw the ball up. The, usually, it's a top spin jump, and they'll approach and they'll snap their wrist to get that nice top spin. But. 
float serves are really the thing that we like in volleyball. It's very similar to that knuckleball of a baseball. Yeah, we saw last year the very heavy serve uh, that can be created that dives down into the... Yes. And it's very difficult to judge. Yeah, sometimes you have that float serve that goes side to side or it can just drop. So Lyman taking control here in set number one. They're on a 5-1 run and they've upped the lead to 17-10. to And really, it's just, a, it's more Ledger's sort of disjointedness, errors. yeah, than anything else right now. And another point for Lyman. So right now, 18-10, Lyman on a roll. Which, some of that could just be nerves. You're playing in a huge arena. You actually have a pretty big crowd right now, both crowd sections. An uncharacteristic, I think, service error. We haven't seen many from Lyman, but that time, uh, Gardella with the second service error of the game for the Bulldogs, and Ledger will get it back down 18-11. And really what Ledger needs, I mean, in my opinion right now, is a hot serve. Somebody who has a nice, you know, and whether or not they're service winners or not, or just getting a couple of easy points. Consistency. You, you got to chip away down seven. A nice little 3-0, 4-0 run with some service winners would be a good way to start. Peckham with the serve for Ledger. A big hit by Lyman, but Ledger there to stuff it. And there's a winner. Ledger got to go one point at a time. Uh, I feel like Ledger's done a really nice job at the net with blocks. Absolutely. Where Ledger really has struggled is their, is their communication and their serves, and that's a really nice serve there by Peckham. And that's all they need is a serve like that, a little bit of a run. Big hit on the far side by Lyman. That was a tardy along with Brooks. Latour will serve for the Bulldogs. Senior Cassidy Latour. Out of bounds was Haydash. So that came on the side of the net. So Lyman will, they've got their 20. So now they're within striking distance of the first set victory here. They're up 20 to 12. That's a great serve, deep and hard. But there's another Unforced error that time on the Lyman side of things. Turn it back over to Ledger. And Ledger right now, Haydash going in to serve. We're going to get a sub in. Taberham will come in replacing Cully. And we'll see if Haydash can get something going here for the Colonels. Nice dig. Uh, oh, that's a great cover. Beautifully done, but an extra hit, I believe. Yep, that was no. four. It shouldn't be. I think Sergio's going to come in and talk. So that's a block, and that's a touch. You get three more after that. You can see it right here? Yeah, so she went up, she blocked it. That doesn't count as a touch. You get three more after a block touch. So Ledger will retain the serve and basically like redo. redo. Looks like the ref was playing beach volleyball rules instead of indoor. <laughs> so Haydash will serve again. And there's another service error. Service errors have been the trouble for Ledger and, and you know, if they lose this first set, I, I think that's the message. That's the focus. Coach Cummings says, you know, we gotta get these serves in. Because they're doing a great job at the net. And Passing is great. Yeah. You're able to set your hitters. Tabraham that time sails it long, 22-13. So Lyman's on the cusp. So I, here's a chance for you to be honest. You can never admit this as a player, but as a <laughs> broadcaster, you can be honest. When you get down like 22-13, does part of you say, let's just roll this one over and get into the next one? Or do you really want to try to fight nine, ten points down? You know, it, 
it can go both ways. You have some of those players that want to roll over and die. You have others that will fight. But really, the goal is just to get some momentum. Volleyball is a huge momentum game. You can go on those 5-1 runs like Lyman, but then all of a sudden, miss hit, out of bounds, huge momentum swing. You maybe a big block, and then all of a sudden, you can come back. And You know, 22-13, yes, it's a huge, but they could come back. Lyman could say, oh, they're down. They're not going to come back. They could let up a little bit too, you know? Uh, right now, everything going Lyman's way. The kill that time, near side, you see the strong put away from Lyman. And Darone will have the serve. Nope, check that. A tardy will have the serve for Lyman. Lindsey Davies checks into the game to a nice reception from the crowd for Ledger. A tardy with the serve. Near side, nice dig by Johnson. And then right away, put right back. Lyman with Avery Brooks, beautiful kill. Take a look, right into that open spot past Davies and now a 24-13 lead. Lyman a point away from set one victory here. In the first set of the day, a volleyball invitation alive from Mohegan Sun. Tardy with the strong serve. Oh, got a little break that time, did the Colonels. Tabraham got the kill with a little help Off from the net. Shot. Little trickle. Kira Opalenic in to serve for Ledger. That's huge, get the serve in first. Davies sets and all right, a little two in a row. The Colonel's starting to creep. It's 24 15. A little bit of a momentum change. Fortunately, she shouldn't have reached back. Number three had that one. That's the talk, and you saw her say that was me. Yep. She, she saw that. It's tough. I'm guilty of it too. <laughs> Sometimes, as a front row player, you just want to play some defense. Well, as a, uh, a vertically challenged person, I will tell you that sometimes we also just, you know, we forget that we're not 6'4". You want to block? Yeah. <laughs> oh, great ups. Oh, what a great job by Lyman. That was a huge spike on the side for Ledger. And Lyman stayed with it, and they have a chance to win it right here. Ledger's fighting. Oh, this is a great rally right here. Good talk. Oh, and Pearson couldn't get it to go. And there's your first set, 25-15. Lyman with the first one. So set one goes to Lyman Memorial. And now. All right, let's, we'll be back right after this. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Well, Lindsay is a very special player. Uh, she doesn't get a lot of playing time. Uh, this is her senior year. She hasn't been able to make the team every year. So we put her on this year, and she has gone above and beyond. I love the friends I make in volleyball. Um, I want to be a bright light in a dark room. If the team is down, I want to be the person that they'll come to, to look up to, and to make everyone smile. I just love cheering even when I'm not on the court. I love being the loudest person in the gym. What makes Lindsay special is her spirit. She brings laughter, she brings team unity. Uh, she is the, the white part of the Oreo, if you will. She keeps the team together and that's something that doesn't show up in stats books or doesn't make the paper. But as a coach, that deserves every bit of recognition because that's chemistry is key in volleyball and uh, Lindsay helps us with our chemistry. Like two years ago, um, my dad committed suicide and I don't want anyone to feel like that and I want to make sure that I'm always a bright light that people can come to. I want to make sure that I'm always a positive person. I don't want anyone to ever feel upset when they're around me. So I try and make sure that wherever I'm going, I'm always you know, a positive 
outlet that anyone can go to. I like to make myself open to everyone. So she actually sets the example. Uh, pretty much everyone else gets in the game in some fashion. They have different roles. And to see her sitting there always cheering, always motivated, always up, it keeps them up. And again, in a game where you can have ups and downs, having someone that's a constant up motivator is huge. We're back at Mohegan Sun. The Day Volleyball Invitational is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that is good begins with a smile, and when you visit our office, your smile is our top priority. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. Best smile out there belongs to Waterford Dental Health. Well, happy birthday, number nine. So that's Avery Brooks. Happy birthday to Avery Brooks. Uh, Celebrating her birthday today. Let's meow. Go Lyman. I don't know what we're meowing about, but all right. I like that. Good student section action as we're about to start set number two here. And so first set, we saw a lot of different things. Uh, it, it seemed pretty even early, and then the momentum kind of changed. What did you see from set one? Right, so there were uh, five ties within that, within that first set. We had five different lead changes, but then really to end that set for Lyman, it was a 7-3 run that had that momentum. I, um, I don't know if it was excitement, Ledger's freaking out, Lyman's a little more pumped because they got those lead changes and those runs, that some energy, and now they're just running with it. So we'll see what happens here in set number two. Everyone loves to see themselves on the Jumbotron. <laughs> Lyman will serve. Great pass. Jerome started the serve. And, oh, nice job. Look at these two teams battling. First point goes to Ledger. Now, we saw in the crowd shots, I want to give a special shout out. We saw uh, the scintillating one, Cedric Similian, St. Bernard's High School. And I want to say that I think it's particularly cool that uh, an ECC athlete not affiliated with any of the four schools playing today shows up here at Mohegan Sun, of course. Similian and the St. Bernard's team hoping to get back here to Mohegan Sun during the basketball season. Uh, so shout out to the scintillating one, Cedric Similian, for supporting the crowds, supporting the teams today. And we are quick 2-0 lead here for Ledger. But that Lyman will have the serve. One run. It's actually 1-1, one, one, and that one goes out of bounds, so it'll be 2-1, Lyman. Otherwise, Lyman should not have had the serve. There we go, 2-1, Lyman, and serving will be Arpin. Another one, and this is exactly what Ledger needs to avoid right now. You know, off of that run to end the first set, they cannot let this thing get five points. You know, right. I know you can come back, but you gotta, you gotta kind of keep them in reach until they can sort of get their mojo going here. And as far as the whole match, you want to win this second one. If you go down and it's Lyman's up two nothing, it's a little more hard. Good rally here in the early part of set two. And an uncharacteristic, unforced error by Lyman. Derone didn't get it where she wanted it to be, so Ledger will have it for the serve 3-2. And Megan Tabraham, the senior, will serve for Ledger. Oh, that's a great job by Lyman. Nice Garcia set. did a beautiful job. That one goes long, however. And we are going to be back to Lyman up 4-2. Just a little bit underneath that ball. Gardella with the serve. That's a beautiful serve Great right serve. on the That is right on the line. You can see Riley Johnson Want, wanting to let it go, right. but like you said, Thinking that top spin. It. And then she got out of position because she last minute realized she needed to give it a shot. I think at that point you're almost better off letting it go. 
And that time, it ricochet off a of Haydash, hit Johnson right in the dome. I mean, look at this serve, look at the pace on that serve. That is coming in hard. Definitely. And Riley Johnson, if you wonder if the liberos are tough, she just took one right off the side of the face. Now, if Gardella can do it, if she dropped it short right now, look how far back the Ledger girls are. She could easily drop a short serve, it's gonna land on the ground. And just what Ledger needed, Anaya Pearson put that one away with authority. Look at Pearson get up here and hammer that one home. She does a great job of making herself available for every single play. So back to Ledger. Ledger will have Kylie Gill serving. I like that serve. That's that <laughs> a little heavy. Bit of it. it was an under spin. There was no top spin. It went opposite. backwards. Yeah, yeah. she hit, hit, hit the She hit, the hit that cut. with her fingertips. She hit the cut into a change up at, at <laughs> Lyman. Now, if she could follow that up with a top spin serve, she might really have them uh, on their heels, which that nice was a much harder float. serve, yeah. Yeah, that first one was a miss hit that really helped. <laughs> oh, net violation. So Ledger crept back in here, got themselves within two in striking distance at 6-4. So Lyman will have the serve. Cassidy Latour, the senior with the serve for Lyman. The system foam over to Johnson. And just just long off of Darone's spike, and it goes just out. That one was very close to hitting the line. So now Peckham will serve for Ledger. A very uncharacteristic mishit by Briley Johnson. And that's that unforced error that we talked about. You, right. don't, you don't see this very often. It's not something you want to see on a free ball pass either. But unfortunately, that was one. The setter on Lyman just sent that over. Ledred setter hadn't released yet. And that's a great serve from a tardy. And now Lyman opens up a four point lead again. Yeah. Right into that open spot. You saw how, like you said, Ledger creeping back and Dumping it in. Job by Johnson, now Ledger. Nice rally going right now. Near side. And mm. dropping nice it in. Seat. Grace Haydash that time, dropping it in. That's, got, that's good vision by Haydash. Yeah, she knew she didn't have that hit. Don't try to hit it, just get it over. So Haydash will serve. Nice float. Did you see that drop? That was excellent. So Haydash, big play. Now she's got the serve, and she dumps in a winner right off the bat. And that's the serve right there that you, I find those to be so difficult to judge just oh. watching it from the side. You should see it coming at you. Sometimes you think you have it, and it just... Right to the side. And it, that hit goes long. Ledger creeping right back in now, 9 8. And if Haydash can drop one more serve, get Ledger back even, I think you talked about momentum. I think that would go a long way for the confidence of the Colonels to get themselves back even here in set two. Definitely. That's a great serve down the line. Oh, nice job, Johnson. Nice set. Beautiful job, Darone on the far side with the kill. You see here, they went far side and Darone right into that soft spot. Partially blocked, but drops in and so now it'll go back to Lyman. Ledger creeping, couldn't quite get it tied up. And now Ariana Garcia, the libero for Lyman will have the serve. Oh, the jump serve, I do love a good nice jump serve. Short. And she dumped it in to no man's land for a winner. Short little float. 
the air just comes right out of that. This time she goes deep. Good set. And that's great communication. So you had Latour take that first ball. Wilbera steps in, sets it. And now we have ourselves a good old fashioned rally. Setting Derone again. Good dig by Johnson. Legend's got to take advantage of that free ball. Oh, what a nice play. Oh, and Derone will not be denied. Carly Derone taking over here for Lyman. That was a great hit by Haight Ash in the back row. They turned what looked to be a winner from Ledger into a winner for Lyman on just off of <laughs> one dig and right into the kill. That was beautifully done by Derone. They're gonna keep feeding Derone. That one sails long. She had five kills prior to that. That one sailed long, gets it back to the Colonels as they trail 12-9, so. The serve will go over to Lenick. And a miss hit uncharacteristic from Darone. If she's not up at the net going full spike, she took a little off that one, a miss hit, and Ledger back within two. Garcia wanted that pass. Oh, what a beautiful result that time. Look at this great hustle. Ooh. And Pearson, did she get in? Oh, yeah, I thought so. Yep, she got a little bit too far under. Pearson was trying to get to that ball and snuck under the net, which is unfortunate because Ledger looked like they had a point there. Jerome will serve. Carly Derone, the senior for Lyman. And another foul at the net by Ledger. And creeping ahead now, Lyman with a three point lead here in set number two. Oh, that's a great serve. That was a rocket. Oh, speaking of rockets, that no was touch. clean and out, no touch. So Lyman. Ledger needs to break this momentum. And Jerome, excellent serve. And there's a finally an error in the net as Latour couldn't get it over, and Ledred will take over serve. Lassissim Foam back into the game for Ledred, replacing Fayette, and Lassissim Foam will have the serve. Now you don't see doubles called often anymore in high school volleyball. Even in college, they're really allowing the girls to play, so I'm a little shocked that is they the, would call a double. The double is the equivalent of the uh, of the carry palming the ball for the basketball players, where it, it was as, as effectively just left the, the officials just no longer call it, so it's almost like it's changed what you can do. In a sense, yes, yeah. You see more and more liberties getting taken because that call's not, not often made. I think that was a ball into the net that time by Ledger. I don't believe that was a block. I think that was just a miss hit into the net. And now Lyman back up four here in set number two. Arpin with the serve. The system phone with the set. And a put away. Nicely done, Anaya Pearson gets it back to Ledger. Kill for Pearson. That's five for Pearson. Pearson on one side, Jerome on the other. 
are the kill leaders here. Which is awesome to see a middle hitter have that many. I'm a little biased since I am a middle hitter, but usually in high school volleyball, you see a lot of outside hitters getting all of those kills. Gardella in for the serve for Lyman. No talk that time for Ledger, and 18-13 now. Largest lead of the set for Lyman. side. Both teams trying to set up a hitter. Johnson. Now here comes Pearson. Oh, nice job, Anaya Pearson with the kill far corner. After a good rally, you see Pearson finding that spot deep. Of course, stay tuned and stay with us. Game two, the Fitch Falcons and the East Lime Vikings in the 6.30 contest here in the day volleyball invitational. What a big hit by Cassidy Latour and Lyman. Has kind of maintained that Ledger's crept back in, but Lyman's been kind of sitting at that four point, five point lead for much of the game. They've got out to two and then they kind of cre crept it up a little bit. Calling that a lift. Served by Latour, coming near side. Darone with a big hit for Lyman. Now near side again. And the put away from Haydash. So Haydash's kill will get the ball back to Ledger, trailing by four in 19-15. And boy, as they're underneath the 20 mark right now, you know that Ledger would like to get this thing within a point or two before they get on the other side of 20. Yeah, you don't want that other team to get to 20. It's not a good feeling. A oh, good serve. And no communication as Brooks for Lyman gets credit there. And that was really a function of her going into empty space and Ledger just not talking. That's a, in, I can say it. You know, as a matter of fact, I will say it. That's a bad job by Ledger. You're down well, four, you gotta talk. Most definitely, but that's also somewhere in that center of the court. It's kind of almost everyone's responsibility, so it's like we call that the donut or the Bermuda Triangle because a lot of things will drop in that spot. Oh, great dig. Setting up Darone, and that time into the net. And so Ledger staying there. They desperately need a couple of points off a of serve right now. They you have been so dis going back, so. And we saw her with some very good <laughs> serves her last time out. I like the Bermuda Triangle more than the donut, but I, the donut makes complete or sense. Or campfire, that's another one people call it. It's a bunch of different names. And a miss hit, short side by Riley Benway. And so there's what Ledger needed. They got it within three. Haydash has been effective with the serve, so one more here would get Ledger even closer. They go right back to Darone. When they need a point, you can see Lyman's gonna feed Darone. Haydash coming back off of the serve, and she's gonna get credit. A little miscommunication by Lyman. Two girls thought about going for it, and neither did. And what you couldn't see uh, on camera right there was my cat-like reflexes <laughs> as I got that ball back into play. Haydash with another great serve. They go back to Jerome. Johnson with the dig. Oh, great dump. And a miss hit by Jerome. And here's that momentum that you had been talking about. Ledger back within one and a timeout. 
from Lyman. Coach Vigu with the timeout as Darone put it in the net with this timeout. Which joined by the Burns Agency. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. All right, we're back here. Ledger with the serve. Hey Dash and Lyman's cheering section rooting on the Bulldogs as Ledger, down one, is trying to get tied up for the first time since this thing was one to one. A 5 1 Ledger lead has them in position to do that. Feed Hey Dash, she has been the hot hand. Now back to Darone for Lyman. And there is a big put away and kill. Tabraham with the kill, and we are tied at 20. Hard to believe, but the last time we were tied was one to one. Lyman had as much of a five point lead, and now we are tied. Ledger serving still with Haydash. Nice little off speed shot. She knew she didn't have a swing. Oh, nice Great dig. defense. Great rally here. Way to talk. Was this a phone? So, feeding Darone again. And I'm going to have a comment here in a second about something that I think I see. Uh, unfortunate uh. error that time by Tabraham. But I'm wondering if Ledger has figured out a little bit in terms of Darone. Uh, they are much better positioned whenever they feed Darone on the far side. Ledger has shifted, and I think they might have a feel for her angles on that far side kill attempt. Definitely. I'm sure that's something that Coach Cummings said in a timeout. Um, defensively, he's a great player himself, so he sees things, and he's one to share everything that he sees. 21 all. Ledger with the serve. Oh, Polenic with the serve. Because I haven't seen Darone with a clean kill in quite a while. She has got, they have been in this the right spot, have the Colonels. Here we go, near got a side bit Darone. Of a bigger block on her, too. I don't know if she's used to that. Pearson does a great job of getting over that net and really being in their face. And for the first time since 1 0, Ledger on top here, 22 21, with a chance to take set two and even us up at one. Oh, beautiful vision. Gardella ties us up at 22. So they went near side, went far side okay, rather. That That's well done. They've been feeding Darone. They went on the other side to Gardella. Darone with a power serve for Lyman. And Johnson's ball for Ledger sails just long. Now Lyman with a 23-22 lead and the serve. Darone with a chance to serve out here in set two. It's a great deep float serve. Gotta communicate. And there was a lack of communication. Now Lyman a point away from a two set to zero lead. So we're gonna have another timeout. So you're down 24-22, you just had the lead, you've lost it now, you can't have any more mistakes. What's the, or, you know, what's the sequence of importance here if you're Ledger? Good pass to start. You're on serve receive right now, you get a good pass, good set, put the ball away. On the other side of things, if you're Darone, you're serving that hard, hard serve. With a two-point lead, you feel like you should go and 
rip your you know your best serve, or is this one of those let's just get it in and, and see if we can you know get that last point? Uh, a little bit of a happy medium. Let Ledger make that mistake though. Don't go out there doing your risk it all serve just for one point. Let Ledger make that mistake. 24, 22. Jerome with the serve for Lyman. She Ch lit up a little bit if you see that. And just sails wide. Ledger has life. 24, 23. And that was not out by much. Just wide. La system foam will serve for Ledger. 24, 23. Good serve. And a net violation on Lyman. We're tied at 24. Actually, they called a lift. A lift. All right, explain to the folks at home what a lift is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> basically, like, you're carrying the ball. You have your palm up facing the ceiling, and that's not a lot. It's like a carry. Perfect. And an error at the net by Latour, and now Ledger's back with an opportunity to win set two. They're up 25-24, and Lassissum Foam with the serve. And you saw Pearson and Bush at the net that time were in great position for the block. Pearson, and she with an unforced Same error. 25 25. Lyman and Arpin will have the serve. Great pass by Haydash. Oh, nice dig, Johnson. Good talking by the Colonels. A little tight. Back it goes to Latour. Oh, beautiful dig. That is not an error you want at this point in the game, or ever, but. Game point Lyman. Set two on the line. Arpin will serve. Oh, what a beautiful kill. Which is awesome. I mean, back row attacks aren't a huge thing. when. In high school volleyball, it's something that you really do in college and club, but I love to see it. She's been hot hand all night, why not set her? Tabraham with the serve for Ledger. Oh, that's a great serve. I think that Atardi is saying she knew she should have let that one go, but that was a sideline serve. You don't see that very often. And just like that, now Ledger back on the chance to win here in set two. Deep serve by Tabraham. Jerome just going to get it over. Johnson Gotta with a dig. Use free ball. There it and is. the winner put away Grace Bush and set two goes to Ledger. 27 25. Now, you know, this has been an exciting game, and for Ariana Garcia, sometimes injury can be the end of things. Instead, for her, it was the beginning. Take a watch. You're watching Game Day. So I grew up doing gymnastics. I started when I was about six, I'd say. I did it until eighth grade, so like 12, 13-ish. I went to Texas and did gymnastics, and I quit there. And then when I moved back to Connecticut, I started it again and then I hurt myself, and then I quit again. How did you hurt yourself? I did a one and a half on floor, and I landed two straight up, and a vertebrae in my back slipped. I know she did gymnastics for a really long time, and then she had some obstacles there and decided to jump over to volleyball, which clearly was an awesome choice for her. Um, she has come so far. So my friend Carly, she was the one who, like, Made, she didn't make me do it, but she like inspired me to do it. 
and of course there's like still like a lot of physical like impact and all that but you know it's like bruises and like bumps and, you know like you know not anything too serious i remember um, when I was still in college, I went and watched my seniors now, who w were freshmen at the time, and I watched them. Um, it was a game at Ledger, and me and my dad are looking, like, laughing at because they were so tiny and so, so young. Um, and just to see how far they've come from their freshman year to when I met them last year, and still a whole nother year, they're all more mature um, and just have developed so much as players. Does the gymnastic skill set translate to volleyball? Yes, yeah. it really does. So for like diving and stuff like that, it's important to know like what your body can do for itself. And you can really hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing. So I think it's a good thing that I did gymnastics for this. It really helped. I would say she brings a lot of spunk, a lot of spirit. Um, she's she's my go-to person when I, when I need someone to bring another girl up. Um, she just brings a lot of energy to the court. She's all over the place. Um, she covers my entire court. She runs my back line. Um, such, a, such a great kid, such a fun personality to be around. Um, and I just, I'm so proud of how far she's come. You're watching Game Day and the Day Volleyball Invitational, brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that is good begins with a smile, so why not have the best smile? Your smile is our top priority. At Waterford Dental Health, you're gonna get all that gentle care that you deserve. It's personalized, it's competent. It's Waterford Dental Health. Visit them at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. Casey O'Neill and Madison Canistrari, and we are tied at one, one set apiece. It was all Lyman in set one. It appeared that way for a little while in set two. What'd you see happen there? Right, Lyman led 20 to 15. There were six ties in that set, but Lyman, it was 24 to 22, and they just couldn't seem to put that ball away. And Ledger came back and won it in overtime. Yeah, two set points for Lyman. They couldn't get it done. And, you know, you talked a lot about momentum. Let's see what happens. The window is open, if you will, for Ledger. And we're all tied at one. And Lassissum Foam will serve as we start off set three here for Ledger. Early point for Ledger, and not to make too much of it, but like I said, I really do feel like Ledger hurt themselves in the first set with the service errors. Definitely. They've, they've definitely done a better job with that. And I thought Jerome was really causing them problems as well, and they seem like they've kind of figured her out a little bit. So she's a little Lyman, frustrated too, if you can see her face. She's getting frustrated with herself. She's just gotta reset and really, she's capable, very much so. Ledger with a quick 2 nothing lead here. Yeah, Lyman needs to uh, find a way to get other people involved. You know, you saw the tour with some opportunities, uh, but Jerome is their big hitter, and after a bunch of early success, Ledger seems to have neutralized her. So, you know, it's, this is a game of adjustments. All sports are, you have to adjust. It's a great set. That was Tabraham for Ledger now. The system foam and uh, what a beautiful hit by Haydash <laughs> and it just just sails. Three one and it'll go oh, over oh, to Darone. Two one, not three, nothing. Darone with the serve and a winner for Darone. Tied up at two. Disappointing hands from Mike DeMauro at the table. That ball sailed to us. We're tied at two. And we'll see what that whistle was. It was just for the scoreboard. It was. Roger that. Drone with a serve and oh, beautiful run on the line. Johnson had to take a chance. Oh, I That's like a that. Nice rip. That was Latour with the big hit. We said they have to find someone other than Darone, and Latour is going to be the one. Great dig by Johnson. Nice little switch up by her too. Instead of nice rip, they dug it. Let's tip it at them now. 
And that's going to sail long. That's a great, great point for Ledger as they go up 3 2. Taberham with the serve for the Colonels. So I like that serve. That was ripped. Atardi is saying, you know, my bad, but I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't know what else you're supposed to do. That ball looked like that would have died right on the line. Yeah, that was a great serve. Atardi kind of stepped away from it, thinking about not playing it, so she didn't have her hips behind the ball. That's the only thing that she probably could have fixed. Back to Latour. Well done. Cassidy to Latour. Now you're starting to see where Darone. They might have figured a little, th you know, Ledger kind of figured Darone out. Now they're feeding Latour, and she has gotten the hot hand here for Lyman. Arpin with a serve for Lyman. Johnson couldn't handle that one, and it'll be Lyman's point, 4-4, four, four. and Arpin will continue her serve. I think that was that same thing we saw previously, almost like the change-up. It came off the fingertips and right. didn't have a lot of life on it. Just got over the net and it turns out to be a winning serve. Back to Latour. Hey Dash, nice dig. Very good rally here. Oh, nice smart play. Lyman keeping it in. And the point, Gardella. See Gardella sees the sideline, goes into that corner. Nobody there. Arpin will serve. Jerome for Lyman now back with Ledger. Jerome setting up Latour. Far side, Haydash. And Haydash puts it away, net violation. No. No. Ledger point. It should be, but they called her in the net. It was all ball. Oh, yep, that's a tough one. Five straight for Lyman. They're up 7 4 with the serve. That's uh, a big, much needed point. Hey, Dash, with the kill. So let me ask you a, a volleyball question about the spin of the ball. In baseball, though, I never could as a hitter. You're taught that you can recognize the spin of the ball and you'll know what it's what it's doing. I could never do that. I just saw it and hit it and you know played on. Can you see the spin of the volleyball off of a serve, for example, to judge which way it's going and know what it's going to do? Oh, yeah, off the serve. Off of a hit, I mean, you're more looking at shoulders and the way the player is facing. Um, a hit, most of the time, you're, it's a top spin. It's, you got that nice snap of the wrist. But a serve, definitely, you can see it and you can really see if it's dropping early. Like, you're taught to call the ball before the ball is even coming over the net because you should be able to recognize it. I'm watching, for example, a, a tardy serve for Lyman, and we'll get a chance to see it again here as Lyman now up to their biggest lead, 9-5. A tardy hits kind of like a side spin. It doesn't have a lot of top spin to it, and it's... So, I mean, the spin rate that we're talking about here in volleyball, I think baseball is ahead of the game, but we're talking spin rate here on a volleyball. But let's take a look at a tardy serve here, and you see how it comes. That one was yeah, a little more... That was that more was of a, a float floater. than anything, yeah. Her previous two were side spins, which I... Which is probably more than likely 
she's not doing it on purpose at this age. You're really, she's just miss hitting it and it happens to look good and it's being effective. It's not anything that, I mean, I shouldn't discredit her. Maybe she does know how to do that, but at this age. 8-1 run for Lyman. They have a 10-5 lead here. Let's take a look again at Tardy's serve. And that's back to back. As soon as, yeah. as, soon as I brought it up. <laughs> More than likely, she was just miss hitting that and those are the best kind. You know how many times like you can hit it with your thumb and it'll still go over? It's not what you wanted and you get an ace and you're like, all right, I'll take it. Latour keeps it in for Lyman. Lassissum foam. Good rally going here. Oh, good job by Lassissum foam. Johnson to get it deep. Latour with a left hand. Johnson with a dig. And a point, Lyman, their biggest lead. Ledger, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a timeout here soon from Coach Cummings. Ledger right now struggling a little bit. And Lyman just sort of a little more uh, energy right now in this third set. Hey, Dash. That's a great swing. Just a little bit out. Good power behind that, though. Lyman cruising. And Gardella. And there's our timeout from Coach Cummings. And with this timeout, brought to you by the Burns Agency. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. A 10-1 run from Lyman, led by the outside hitters Latour and Daron. Six kills each in the match, and right now Lyman with their biggest lead, 12-5 here in set three. We're tied 1-1. You're watching the day of volleyball invitational live from Mohegan Sun. Casey O'Neill along with Madison Canastrari. Ledger needs to get but first they need to get a point and get the serve back. And then they gotta start making a run before this thing gets a little bit out of hand. And there it is on cue. They get the point and they'll get the serve back. And we're gonna have the serve going to Ledger and it will be Emily Peckham, the junior. That's a good serve. Great float with a drop. You saw Arpin went low for it, got a hand on it, but there was no way that she could have controlled that as Peckham hit. So a what's hard the spin sinker. rate on that one? Well, I think more that was really more about the exit velocity of the serve itself. The exit velocity on that serve, I think, was what was really important. And there nice it is. Drop. Oh, and that time a little bit low into the net. And that's really what Ledger can't afford right now, right? They can't go point for point when you're down six. You need, to, you need a run to cut into it, even if it's just two or three points. Nine service errors, and that's where it pretty much says it all. And right on cue, a winner. Latour with a beautiful serve. And now a 14-7 lead. You see the depth of that serve from Latour, and that's a bullet. She is very powerful, both as an outside hitter and with her serve. That's another great serve right deep on the line. The system foam, and now Haydash. Darone. Way to follow that on Johnson. Oh, beautiful ball by Haydash. They're coming back here. And a stuff in the net. Well done by Opalinic. And Ledred will have to serve Haydash. Now we saw Haydash in set two. 
get the momentum back for Ledger. Down six here. This would be a good time for a couple of service winners. Darone. Hayda Ash with a dig. Lassissum foam. Sets up a kill from Taberham. And now back to Haydash for the serve. Good deep serve from Haydash. Taking out your outside hitter of Duran. Here comes Duran. Good dig from Johnson. Haydash will just dump it over. Here's a chance for Ledger. And rally will continue. Here comes Daron. Good dig by Haydash. Oh, and Tabraham couldn't get it over. And a big point after a rally like that, Lyman. And that's a, you know, when you're Ledger and you're down six points. That, you, you, you got you know a rally like that and you don't get the point can really take the life out of you. And that one sails wide off of Tabraham and now Lyman extends its lead to 16 to 9. Again, game two after this will be the Fitch High School Falcons and the East Lyme Vikings. And a long out sails, and Lyman now taking control. Serving for Lyman is Atardi. Mia Atardi. The system foam now. Daron, and that sails wide, and Ledger will get it back. Down, though, seven points here, 17-10, and Opalenik will serve. The junior, Opalenik. Here's Darone. The system foam with a nice Great setup. Attack. We hadn't called Pearson's name in a while, but they're gonna go right back to her again. And this time she puts it away. And Naya Pearson with a much needed kill for Ledger. Yeah, unfortunately, that's one of the things with the middle hitter being your hot hand. She's rotating out and she can't even be set in the back row. You have Haydash that's playing all the way around, but middle hitters, you get liberoed out. That's seven kills for Pearson. Along with Latour and Daron, the leading. Kills on both sides. Here comes near side Darone again, and that's going to stay along. Ledger with a chance to cut into this lead here now. A little bit of run if Opalinic can continue her hot hand with the serve. Good strong serve. Nice job by Lassissum Foam. And Haydash couldn't get it up high enough, and it'll go back to Lyman. And every time Ledger starts to make a little run, Lyman does a real good job. And that's been a difference. Lyman's runs have been four and five. Ledger's have been two and three. Right. And over the course of, you know, a set, that adds, adds up. Double hit? Yeah, they don't normally call those on first ball, like the first ball received. And that's when your two, when your hands hit the ball separately. Yeah, and so it goes like left, time. right. I mean, and it could be minuscule, but you see that spin. And realistically, you're not as a ref supposed to call it based off the spin of the ball, but sometimes they do. And now it's going to sail out of bounds, Lyman. Largest lead of the set, eight points, 20 to 12. They hit that 20 mark with a big lead here and an opportunity to take 
a 2-1 lead here in sets. It's all tied up at one. The jump serve from Garcia is hard. Deep. And a nice job by Johnson with the dig. Now we got ourselves a nice rally coming. They're gonna go to Darone. Haydash into the net, 21 to 12. Lyman feeling it here. Alleged made a great adjustment in the second set. You see Lyman switching things up, going to Latour more, changing up how they're approached. Alleged's gonna have to make another adjustment here. Garcia, another great serve. A nice job that time as Davies and Pearson. A presence at the net and Ledger will get it back. Trailing by eight and the system phone will have the serve for the current. A miscommunication that time by Lyman. And Ledger. The system foam will serve again as they've cut the lead to seven here, 21-14 in set three. Oh, that's a great serve, low, just over the net. Oh, what a beautiful play. There's that Bermuda triangle. Latour saw the gap in the middle, the Donut hole, if you will. <laughs> and right into that space. Lyman creeping closer to a third set win. Darone, good serve. Lassism foam. Coming back the other side now. Ledger trying to set up. On the far side, hate it. Nope, and it's going to be a violation. And a 23-14 lead here now. And Darone with a chance to serve out two more points. We'll take set three for the Bulldogs. There's one of them. Brilliant serve. Couldn't handled by Bush. Game point for Lyman. Third ace for Darone. Big outside hitter, big serve. And she's gonna try to put set three into Lyman's hands here. It's 24-14. Yes. And that will do it. 25-14. Lyman takes set number three here in the Volleyball Invitational. You know, that's a big time play. Why don't we take a look at last week's top plays here on Game Day's Top 8. We're gonna start off with girls soccer at Waterford. Cameron Dickinson, the cross, and Allison Ciosi puts it away. Game winner versus Plainfield in the final five minutes. Well, sometimes we love our fans at Game Day and they say a picture is worth a thousand words. This guy right here. Student section loves them. We love them at game day. Pumping up the crowd. Soren Reef versus Griswold, showing why he has the power, the speed, and the elusiveness. One of the top backs in all the land in a 49-6 victory over Griswold. At number five, Keegan Appleby loves game day. And game day loves how he rips the winner. Free kick versus East Lime, 2-1 final for the Bobcat victory. Jax Higgins of Waterford, every cornerback's dream, picks it off in the middle of the field, shows the speed, and burns New London for the pick six in Waterford's 34-13 win over the Whalers. Back to the Killingly Griswold game, Alex Potapsky with the strip, and then it's every lineman's dream, big Terrence Allen, look at the big man go! Touchdown for the offensive lineman, defensive lineman of Killingly. Man, the big man was moving. Jorge Almendarez, only a sophomore, 35 yards out, no problem. They call him Rocket Man. Look at that, into the top corner. But the number one play, Will French, 
channeling Barry Sanders versus Montville High School. The spin, the broken tackle, the speed. A big win for Stonington, 55-24 over Montville. So those were some great eight plays. We want to see your top plays. Send us all your top plays to all of our social media platforms, and maybe you can be on next week's Top Plays. You're watching the Day Volleyball Invitational on game day. And game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile, and so when you visit their office, your smile is their top priority. Their entire team is dedicated to providing you the personalized and gentle care that you deserve, so contact them at waterforddentalhealth.com. Waterford Dental Health. Casey O'Neill along with Madison Canestrari, a 2-1 lead in sets for Lyman Memorial and set three got off to a good start for Ledger, but kind of fell apart after that. Yeah, definitely. Lyman went on a 5-0 five, run after trailing 4-2 early. Ledger was winning. They never trailed again and ended up finishing that set on an 8-2 run. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much says it all. I mean, right, they took over with a 5-0 uh, run that got them the momentum back and then they just kind of never looked back. And that 8-2 run, it, it, not that Ledger fell apart, but it really just kind of felt like Ledger had no answer for the run itself. He talked about momentum, and it just Ledger could never get it back. They they would win a point, and maybe get one more, and then it would go back to Lyman. And so, uh, how important is it here, starting set four for Ledger, to a get off to a good start, and b more importantly, to not allow a big run from Lyman? Oh, this is huge for them right now. Honestly, they're receiving. I love that as a coach you want that you have the first opportunity to score unfortunately a lot of miscommunication right there and it's funny one of the great aspects of sports is when you lose and you leave and you say we were better than them we should have you know we should have beaten them and we beat ourselves i think that happens a lot where you think that you know if you didn't play your best that you know, it was more you lost rather than the other team winning, but that's kind of discounting how good the other, you know, the reason maybe you didn't play so good is because the other team did things that forced you into places that you weren't comfortable with. Right, something you've never practiced before or just something you've never seen. So right now, for example, Daron, you know, she has an excellent hard serve. You know, Ledger's gonna say, well, we didn't communicate. Well, part of the, you know, she's forcing you into those situations where communication is key because she's hitting bullets at you from, from the serve. And you can see right now, Ledger doing a much better job here in this point. And they are gonna get the win as Latour puts it in the net. I think Ledger, regardless of what happens today, will walk away feeling like they left a lot out there. That there was service errors, uh, lack of communication. Yeah. Two people going for the ball and no one getting it. Net, you know, problems at the net. I right. think that so no matter whether they win or lose today, Ledger's gonna go back to the drawing board and say, we did not play our best. Uh, I think Lyman right now, regardless of what happened, it would say, well, you know, we, we forced those errors. You know, we mm -hmm. played and made you uncomfortable, um, which is what I love as Ledger will get back tied at two. So I think both teams probably feel like, you know, they are the better. I think both teams walk away going, I think we're better. Right. And I think that's one of the fun things about sports is when you can play a game and go walk away going, you know, I'd like to play them again. And we'll see if Ledger can make that adjustment here in set four as the system foam with a big hit. Now, I do want to ask you a question about the whole uh, uh, synchronized celebration thing that volleyball <laughs> teams seem to do after every point. I, I mean, what's the deal with that? Seriously. Honestly, I don't know where it originated, but it's something you do it on every team. You always have different cheers. I mean, you have one for your ace, you have one for a kill, and I mean, Adelphi, where I played university college volleyball, um, we had girls on the bench that would like pretend that they were bowling and knock all the girls over as if they were the pins. And it was just, yeah, you try to get as hyped as possible because energy is such a huge thing. You get that momentum and just, I mean, if your bench is dead, if you're dead, you're just not going to carry through. Oh, there's Ar Arpin with an ace. And so we got the, the ace uh, reaction. 
off of, off of this. So if we can see Lyman on the replay after an ace, that's what they do. They give a little, little fist in the air. I've seen bows and arrows. I've seen, um, I've oh, seen. Oh, they get creative. I like the bowling though. The bowling one's pretty good. That came from, there was a basketball team, a division three school. Oh yeah, we, Peter Wappy and I have, have seen these videos. Yeah, so we had a girl on the team that decided that was going to be her homework and she came to practice and then goes, these are all our new cheers. I do like during Olympic season, curling is always a popular one. And I could see the, I could see the broom going back and forth. That'd be a good, you know, somebody acts as the stone and someone with a broom. I'm telling you, see, I, I could, there's my future, setting up cheering. 5-3 Lyman, Arpin. Net. Now, all right, so. If the ball hits the net on the serve in volleyball, it's fine, right, as long as it goes over? So they're going to argue this, because a first ball received, technically you can have, like, a double touch. And she's not going to let. They're talking it over right now because the ball by hitting the net, she's allowed the double touch. So well, is what you're is what no, you're saying. Not, I don't know how to exactly I mean if it's clearly two separate touches on the body. But you're then supposed to give not. them some leeway as far as for that as first the, ball received, definitely, yeah. You get a little bit more leeway. Anaya Pearson with the kill for Ledgers. So another saying that we would say. So that was her ninth, but another thing that we would say is ball never lies. So if there's an unforced error on the other side after you, the ref's made a bad call or something, we always say, ball never lies. That's a good serve from Tabraham. And this is the point that we talked about in the previous set where Ledger needs to go on a run right now. Ledger, you know, they, they get it back, they win a point, and then they seem to not talk or have an unforced error. Yeah. Hey Dash. They, they've got a great front row now. You've got Pearson and Hey Dash in the front row. Take advantage of that. Well, the answer to that is Cassidy Latour, as she put a rocket right in between everybody. And that's what Lyman has probably done better than anything is go on a run and stop a run. Ledger has been able to get the ball back and not really ever go on a run. Right, so you want to maximize your run and minimize theirs. So here's a good another example, right? Ledger, with the win, cuts it to 7-5. They, if in my mind, right now, whoever's serving, in my head, like, we want this thing with our lead when we give the ball back. Yes. Right, so I want at least two winners here. I want two points, and if they then take it back, but I can't give it right back here. Right. And there's the error by Gill on the serve, and another service error for Ledger, and there goes it right back to Lyman. Tenth of the match for them. Not only does it turn it back to Lyman without getting any points, but now you got Latour with a very heavy serve coming the other way for Lyman. And there's the point. So that's a great illustration right there. Ledger gets it back immediately turns it back over to Lyman and right into a service winner from Lyman. And now what we thought might be 7-7 seven, seven is now 9-5. Right. Nice deep float. Here comes near side. Nice job, Haydash with a block for Lyman. And there goes Darone. Uh, the libero Johnson with a good hard ball and a dig coming on the other side. Now they're going to go middle. Was that touched? Yes, it was. Grace Bush with the kill. And the serve will go to Peckham. We saw her have some success in that second set where Ledger crept back in and got their win. So Peckham will serve for the Colonels, 9-6. And doing the same thing now. You have to try to get a couple of points here with the serve. Yeah, I always like the saying side out plus one. So you side out, get the ball, add a point on your serve. Exactly. And then if you don't win the next one, you, you haven't lost any ground. 
And what we saw last time with Lyman getting the side out and then getting the serve, I mean, it just felt like, you know, Ledger couldn't get any momentum to it. A little miscommunication on Lyman's side. Yeah, they haven't had, a, they've been very good with that. Pretty solid, yeah. Oh, nice play by Johnson. See, now this is the point, Ledger, you want this. It's a long rally. This is going to be a huge momentum if they can keep this point, and you'd have it up 8 9. Darone, good communication here. Nice job, Johnson. Set up the middle. Another communication. Uh, dangerous. That was a little <laughs> too close to the net. Darone again. Yeah, what a great rally. Pro <laughs> perhaps our best of the game so far. And no. just Ooh. long by Darone. A huge point for Ledger, cutting it to 9-8. There's your side out plus one. And now Peckham with another serve and a chance to tie it at nine. And just long on the serve from Peckham. And back to Lyman, 10-8. A tardy will serve for the Bulldogs. The tardy serve. Great recovery by oh. Lyman. What a put away. So the serve will go to Ledger. Haydash, perhaps I think from what I've seen, perhaps the best serve for Ledger comes from Haydash. Right. Nice little side out plus one would put Ledger on top. I think for the first time. Are you familiar with the jinx term? Absolutely. You put it. You put it out into the world, Madison, and what happened? Murphy's law. So the winner from Lyman, and they're going to keep that lead. They're holding on to it. Here comes Ariana Garcia. She of the jump serve. Nice float with a drop. Latour. Now Ledger near side. Tabraham. And here comes Darone. Haydash. Deep ball. Wheat near side, Darone again. I'm gonna set up Darone again on the near side. And that one's gonna be over to Ledger. As that ball went out of bounds, so we'll get Pearson back in the game, and the serve will go over to Opalenic. Oh, beautiful job at the net, Pearson. And so that would be when you when we have a block at the net, we have a block celebration as well? Yes. Okay. That's important a for me to know these things. it's like, roof. See, there it is. Call, there. You yep. roof it. Yep, okay. This is, this is the part, honestly, this is the part that's most important to me. <laughs> I really want to understand the whole various celebrations. Oh, we even have them for bump kills, where you free ball the ball over and it drops just from like a mute miscommunication or something. Everyone says BK. Ledger back on top. That's their first lead of the set at 12-11. And we're going to get a timeout from Lyman. They want to talk it over. So this timeout is brought to you by the Burns Agency. feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 
Ledger on a 7-2 run has taken a lead here in set four. They trail two sets to one to the Lyman Memorial Bulldogs and the serve by Opalinic for the Colonels. And that's gonna be a toe. Nice job by Lyman and they keep it in. Well done. Another good rally. We've seen a lot of good rallies here in this set in the early going. Both teams have kind of figured each other out, made those adjustments, so defensively they're picking everything up. There's the set to Pearson. Anaya Pearson with the kill. Gardella almost had her. If she could have just pressed her hands over that net a little more, she would have stuffed her. Instead, ball went straight through her thumbs. Opalinic with a serve. Two point lead for Ledger here in set four, trailing two sets to one. That's a heads up play. Gardella with the kill. And there's the momentum that Ledger had. Lyman now, if they can get there, side out plus one. We'll get this thing tied at 13. I thought you said something about jinxing. Can't That's only when you universe. do it. Only when you do it as a, as a former player. I'm just a broadcaster. I have, I have no, no say. The universe doesn't listen to me. Or, you know, I, I, you know, I think the universe is uh, confusing the two of us. 14-12, Ledger on top. The system phone will have the serve for Ledger. Oh, nice ball but from Latour. They're going to go back to her again. Lyman talking well here. Back to Latour. Oh. These are some rockets. I wouldn't be surprised if she switches it up tip right here. Yep. Good call, and the, there it is. Latour heads up. You, you called it. <laughs> Instead of three in a row, that's her 10th kill, but that one came softer than those other nine. Yeah. She ripped those first three. They kept digging everything that gets frustrating. Might as well switch it up, throw in a tip. Ledger was on their feet. Arpin with the serve for Lyman. Well, I think that ball was going out. Ledger, opportunity here near far side. That's a good ball by Latour. That's a, that's a point that Lyman stole right there. They really didn't have any business being in that point. And they've tied it up at 14, and now Ledger needs to be very careful. Arpin. Good pass by Haydash. And a nice job at the net by Gardella, and she denies Pearson. And another point at the net goes to Lyman. And here's that little run we talked about. They got it back and they've tacked on points. And this has been the difference in the game. Ledger's inability to sustain a run and Lyman's ability to get one, especially at crucial times. Deep serve from Arpin. They go back line to Haydash. Now they're gonna go to middle, Gardella. Oh, nice kill Dang. from Tabraham. And there's that, there's exactly what Ledger needs more of, right? That's the, they broke a run mm -hmm. before it got away from her. And now Tabraham, off of her kill, will serve for Ledger. Oh, I love that serve. Just above that. Latour was, de yes. Latour was denied, unusual. Now Haydash 
Going to go right back to Latour. And an unforced error by Latour, and Ledger ties it back up. I want to see Tabraham rip another serve like the previous one. Let it go. It's all about that hand contact. You should get that same one. There it is. Oof. That one didn't have enough topspin on it. It died. Out of bounds, and Lyman. Sailed out of bounds. Sailed. She wanted it to die in, and it just kept going. Gardella will serve it for Lyman. I'm going to go out on a limb and say first team to 20 in this one wins. That's, that's why it's called out on a limb. I'll agree to disagree. All right, 20 push-ups. <laughs> I already went to the gym today. I went to um, Dunkin' Donuts. Is that, I don't know if that's the same <laughs> thing. Latour into no, into the absolute, into the Bermuda Triangle, the donut, the campfire. Middle of that court. Timeout taken by Ledger. They're trying to stem this run from Lyman. Lyman now up 19-16, and since I put it out there that the first team to 20 would win this set, and if Lyman wins this set, they win the match, clearly Coach Cummings needed a timeout. You know, He's got look, another one too, right? He's, he hasn't used any of this set. No, the only time out was taken by Lyman. Now, Coach Cummings, they jumped out this year, and they were they lost to Woodstock twice in their first three matches. But they beat NFA, Mottville, and New London, Mott, not, none of whom are particularly strong volleyball teams. And they went into the heart of their schedule. Bacon, very good volleyball team. Griswold, undefeated. Waterford, who has beaten all the good teams. Uh, East Lime and Valley. And then those three wins. This now represents part two of the Ledger tough part of the schedule because after this they go to Bacon and Griswold and Waterford and Fitch. So it doesn't get any easier after this. So, uh, you know, Ledger's learning a lot about themselves when they're playing these top teams. They're competitive, but they have to find a way to break through. Hey, but they always say it's hard to beat a team twice. Back to Latour. Both teams trying to set up a hitter. Middle hitter now. Great touch by Pearson. Slows that ball down. We're able to get it back over. Yeah, Avery Brooks had the big hit for Lyman. Good job by Ledger. Pearson denied. Oh, nice use of the left by Latour. What a beautiful play from Cassie to Latour using the left hand on the outside. Four straight now by Lyman. 20 to 16, they're the first ones to 20. So if you're right, you're doing the push-ups, right? You already went to the gym today. Yeah, so it's you. Well, no, I mean, you're, you're a re rehabbing athlete. I am a, uh, I'm a guy talking spin rate at a volleyball match at the Mohegan Sun. You're the, you're the former athlete. So a much needed momentum break for Ledger. And the last time we saw the serve from Peckham, it was, or excuse me, from Kylie Gill, it was an error. That time she puts it away. But look at Latour. That was a rocket. 13 kills for Latour. And just like they say, the person that makes the kill gets the serve. And we have seen her with very strong serves. Oh, nice job at the net. Hey Dash with the point. Ledger gets it back. Now it's huge here. Whoever serves for Ledger, it is huge for them to get a couple of service winners. They got to get a couple points off the serve. Oh, and Ledger's only got one sub left. 
You heard that all the time, right? The person that gets the kill gets the serve. I mean, that's a well-known volleyball. Not, not, you, you, you have never heard that before? No. So you're telling me that, that that's not typical volleyball lingo? Well, I'm making it. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> making it volleyball lingo. You know, you got to go through the rotations. See, that's volleyball lingo. Oh, what a oh, beautiful up, job by Latour. Latour. Play of the game by Latour. Ledger's miscommunicating over there. Oh, and an error by Darone. You can see the frustration on her face. She was very disappointed. She saw she had a chance after just a brilliant play from Cassidy Latour. Ledger, 21-19. They need a good serve here from Grace Bush. Nice sideline. Kind of takes Darone out of it by her passing it. You don't want to set her. She doesn't have time to transition out. A little bit of a low set, Haydash. Really good adjustment. If I'm, there we go. That's hey a dash. better set, and look at she gets a good swing off it. Oh, nicely done, Darone. That was a good job by Latour. They're gonna go right back to Haydash. Tight. I want to see Lyman get it back to Latour. Unfortunately, she's back row. She's actually, she's is she setting right now? She is. There's a chance for Ledger. Haydash puts it away. Grace Haydash cuts the lead to one, and Grace Bush will have the serve for Ledger. So as much as you want it to get back to Latour, she's the one setting right now. Unless she's setting herself. She can set her dunk. Get a point, but. Tipped. That was tipped. That ball was heading out, and Arpin couldn't tell, got a finger on it, and we're tied at 21. Ledgard has not led in this game since. 3-2. At 21 all, they have a chance for that lead. Bush, momentum, and another one that would have gone out. What a great dig by Latour. Ledgard with their first lead since 3-2. Bush with the serve for the Colonels. Hopefully she adjusts on this one, takes a little tiny bit off. That's way gone. Oof. The opposite, and that was her third in a row. That She got away with two. Yeah. Tied at 22, the serve will go to Mia Atardi. 13 service errors for Ledger. That's gonna be the, their story as they leave today. Haydash will get credit for that, and Ledger, 23-22. Who will be the server for Ledger? Is it gonna be Haydash? It is. Haydash with the serve. Going back to Tabraham. Now Latour sets up Darone, and an error by Darone and Ledger on the edge, 24-22. They are a point away from sending this to the fifth set. Haydash. And that's gonna do it. Ledger has gonna force a fifth set. A beautiful 25-22 win. And you put it in the universe. I did put it in the universe. So we're gonna come back with set five. Right after this, you're watching Game Day Live on day.com. Game Day opens the high school basketball season back at the Mohegan Sun with the second annual day holiday classic will bring you three games on Monday, December 19th. First, a rematch of last year's Division I championship game between East Catholic and Notre Dame of West Haven. Next, a rematch of last year's Division III semifinal as St. Bernard takes on Daniel Hand. And finally, 
ECC rivals New London and NFA see if they can top last season's buzzer-beating drama. It's the Day Holiday Classic, Monday, December 19th at Mohegan Sun Arena and streaming live on game day. After the game, we're going to find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. Summer isn't over at Foxwoods. Summer's never over at Foxwoods. For more details about all the entertainment you can find at Foxwoods, go to foxwoods.com. Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Well, we couldn't have asked for a better start. The day volleyball invitational is going five sets in the first match between Lyman Memorial and Ledger. And beforehand, we were trying to break this one down, and we said Ledger looks like a resilient team. Lyman looks like a veteran, confident, you know, championship team, and that's what we're seeing from both. Lyman, 25-15 in the first set. Ledger bounces back, 27-25. Lyman, 25-14 in the third set. Ledger ba bounces back, 25-22. Ledger squeaking out their sets. Lyman dominating theirs. This one only goes to 15. Can Lyman's runs be too much for Ledger, or can the resilient Colonels dig deep and find something here? We're going to find out. And so, Madison, let me ask you this. What did you see in that set that set the tone for here for set five? There was a huge momentum change towards the end of that set. Lyman was winning 21-17, and Ledger came back on an 8-1 run to end that set. So huge momentum, huge energy. When that final uh, point was scored, I don't know if you saw the crowd for Ledger, but they went crazy. So hopefully that gets them more into this game and you know speed off of that energy and build on that momentum, limit runs, and maximize your own runs. So Lyman has actually been first to 15 points in every single set played tonight. Now that's a great stat. You can't have stats like that unless you have superior craftsmanship in the stat going. We have a guest statistician tonight, and I'm not going to reveal his or her identity. We're going to tease that one for the second uh, game tonight. We'll let you know the entire crew as we head out. But for this one, Ledger and Lyman. Lyman first to 15. They get to 15 first tonight. They might win. Technically, don't you have to win by two? Yes. So they could get to 15 first and still not win. This is true. Aha. And you know, Ledger seems to like to squeak it out by what? Two points, three points? Each? Yeah. Lyman dominates, Ledger squeaks. Lyman will have the serve in the deciding set, and Carly Darone, the senior, will start us off. And the first point goes to Ledger, and that momentum is ongoing here right now. Ledger will maintain that momentum until Lyman can show that they're gonna, you know, break it. Right now, Ledger finished set four, and they're starting set five. The system foam with the serve, a good one, deep. Setting up Latour. And when you need a point right now, you go to Cassidy Latour. Latour has done it in a variety of ways that time with the touch. And we're tied at one, and the serve will go to Lyman and Erica Alpin, Arpin. So Arpin, who has been a very good service so far for Lyman. She's been solid with the serves. Took a little off that one. K-Dash from the back line. Setting up. Tabraham. And Tabraham ultimately will get credit for that one. And Ledger up 2-1. And Tabraham, after, it's the, like I said, how many times do you see the person who gets the kill gets the serve? <laughs> it's just the way the rotation works. She happens to be right front, and then it was her turn. Seems like it's happened an awful lot tonight, I'm just saying. <laughs> And that one sails off of the system foam out of bounds. We're tied at two. And I would not be surprised if this thing is back and forth here in the early going. The birthday girl, Avery Brooks, in for Lyman. And serving will be Gardella.
Pearson with a nice hit. Now they go to Latour. And there's your winner. Cassidy Latour with a rocket. Puts Lyman on top, 3-2. Cardella with the serve. Johnson, and that's going to be... Oh, what a beautiful play by Haydash. And Brooks gets the kill. I thought Ledger, I thought Haydash made, made the play of the game right there. On her hip, one hand out. How that ball got over the net is anyone's guess. But Lyman on a little run now, 4-2. Just out. Just out, Lyman, 5-2, and here's where Ledger really needs a point. They need to stop this right here, right now. Yeah, that's four straight for Lyman. Good pass, great set. Lyman saying nope. Brooks just knocks it over for Lyman. Bush. With the spike, and on the other side, they're going to go just reset. Looking for Pearson. And that That's sails. A great spot. Just in. It right just in. in. Anaya Pearson got that one to sit right in the corner. And that is desperately what Ledger needed. So coming in to serve for Ledger is Kylie Gill, the junior. Big pressure, 5-3. Good serve. Oh, Latour ripped it long, 5-4. And if Gill can get one more, we'll be tied up here in set number five. So the fifth set is one of those things you want to do mini games to five. And for a player as a mindset, first to five, first to 10, first to 15. That's kind of the goal as a team. Well, we're tied at five. And now we're into our second of those five point right. mini sets. <laughs> Gill with a brilliant serve to, to tie us up. And there goes the momentum back to Lyman now. So. Right now, neither of these two teams seem like they're gonna let the other get too far away. Here comes Latour. Latour who has been really a standout for Lyman today. She hits a hard serve and she would desperately like to extend this 6-5 lead. And she does. So now if you're Lyman, you're still playing those mini games, but you wanna to get to the switch. I think they will switch since COVID's basically over now. For a while, they weren't switching sides at that fifth set. Oh, another brilliant serve by Latour. Going to Derone. Oh, nice block. Mm -hmm. And a point for Ledger, 7-6. Caught a lift. Again, a great cover by Garcia, but the ball stayed on her arms a little too long. It was like she lifted it up with her. Emily Peckham, the junior, serving for Ledger. Setting up Haydash. And the lineman was there. Brooks along with Tardy. Stuffed her at the net, and now Atardi will have the serve and an 8-6 lead for Lyman. And I guess they don't switch sides still. Latour setting up Darone. Haydash. Again to Darone. And Lyman, now with their biggest lead, 9-6. And if it's, it was 5-5, five, five, mm -hmm. 
We are a service winner away here for Atardi from their biggest lead. And oh, an unforced error on the serve. So 9-7. And Haydash will have the serve for Ledger. Megan Tabor entering the game for Ledger. Grace Haydash serving. Oh, uh, Haydash with a winner. That dropped at the feet of Atardi. I think she thought that was sailing yeah, wide and it knuckled its way in. 9-8, brilliant serve from Haydash. I mean, as a player, she was in the right spot. She had her foot on the line like they teach you. Just happened to hit her. Oh, nice dig. Darone. Darone is exhausted. You can see the players right now digging deep. Yeah. Five sets is quite a long time to be playing. And looks like Ledger's only played one all season against Fitch. And Lyman's only played one against East Lyme. Here goes back to Darone. So Ledger's won nothing in five set matches. Lyman's 0-1 in five set matches. What a rally here at 9-8. And Ledger ties it at nine. And you can see Carly Darone is tired. This is where she's got to dig deep. Latour on the other side. Haydash and Bush and Pearson. The hitters are tired. They set up Bush. Now, the other side, Jerome. And that'll go back over, double hit. We'll go back over to Lyman with a 10-9 lead. So, in the race to five, it was 5-5. Five, five. In the race to 10, 10-9 Lyman. Garcia, the libero, will serve for the Bulldogs. Nice back set by Latour. Uh, the rallies have been brilliant. That one sails long. And Lyman, 11-9, inching closer. Timeout, maybe one more point. Wouldn't be surprised if timeout for Ledger. Garcia. Oh, nice job. Darone. Tabraham with a miss hit. 12-9, Lyman on a run. And on cue, a timeout. Coach Jeff Cummings takes the timeout, it's 12-9. Ledger starting to look a little bit just worn out. You know, the, the both teams tired and the breaks here, you know, you gotta, you gotta make a play. And right now, Lyman has just made a couple more plays than Ledger. 12-9 lead with the serve. Coach Cummings, in his first season here at Ledger, has a scrappy and resilient team. A lot of seniors. They honestly play a lot like him. On the beach, he's a big, scrappy and resilient player. Nothing yet lets him get him down. So I'm sure he's got some great things to say to them in a huddle. Nine seniors on this Ledger team. Six, I believe, on Lyman. But nine seniors, that's a very veteran group. They are going to have to try to dig deep here. They trail 12-9, and Garcia has the serve for Lyman. Another win, Lyman. Two points away from a five-set victory here at the Mohegan Sun in the day holiday invitational.
Four straight points for Lyman. They were tied at nine, and they're now up 13-9. See, I would have called another timeout just to use it. Deep serve, sails out of bounds, just what Ledger needed. They get it back 13-10. Now the serve's gonna go to Opalenic, and more than anything, they need a couple of points here from this serve. Oh, Darone got put into a tough spot. And that's, a, that's the first one for Ledger, 13-11. Chipping away. Opalenic with another serve for the Colonel. Ooh. Oh, skims the net. And a winner for the Colonels. The Sissom foam with the kill. And they're within one. Actually, Pearson with the kill. It was Pearson, correct. And so here comes Opalinic. Chance to tie it at 13. A nice serve. Changing the pace. The last one was a bullet. Great dig by Haydash. Oh. Back line to Haydash. Darone. I think she mishit it <laughs> yeah, and got away with it. Did you see the look on her face? I think she fanned on it a little bit. She did, he got the side of the ball, but it was a... Hey, a kill is a kill. A kill is a kill, and now, what they say, the person that gets the kill gets the serve. <laughs> and here comes a chance for Darone to win it for Lyman. Haydash goes long, and Lyman has won a very exciting five set Match over Ledger. What a match here. This first game, 5-2 Lyman, 25-15, 27-25 Ledger, 25-14 Lyman, 25-22 Ledger, and then 15-12 for Lyman. Wow. We're going to keep it here. We will have uh, the presentation of the trophy to the winning team. And then, of course, you want to stick around as we will have the player of the game and an interview with the coach as Lyman has found a way to win this one here in the first ever day volleyball invitation. Pearson and Tabraham were the leading kill had for a legend, right? 12 and seven. For Lyman, where did it end up? You had Latour on top with 16 kills, Darone not too far behind with 10 kills, and then you had Arpin with four aces, really leading the team with their tough serves, and I think that was kind of the difference between Lyman and Ledger. You, both teams had some tough servers, but overall, Lyman had a little more, and more consistency. Um, Ledger had quite a few, I think 10 or more, missed serves in, those, in this match. So we will have the presentation of the trophy for Lyman Memorial. Let's, we'll send it to PA announcer Bill Glenny. For Mr. Tom Cantone, president of sports and entertainment here at Mohegan Sun Arena to present the Lyman Bulldogs with their 2022 The Day Invitational Volleyball Championship Trophy. So there is your first ever day volleyball invitational champions, the Lyman Memorial Bulldogs with the victory over the Ledger Colonels in five sets. At this time, we ask that all four compete volleyball teams, Ledger, Lyman, the Fitch, and East Lyman.
Baseline Vikings and the Fitch Falcons will be our second match of the night. But we are going to take a break real quick and come back with your interviews with the player of the game and the coach of the Lyman Memorial Bulldogs. We'll be right back. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Game Day is calling all fans, players, parents, coaches. We want your best plays. Send us a video on any of our social media platforms of any sport, practice, or game, and we will consider it for our plays of the week. After the game, we're going to find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. Summer isn't over at Foxwoods. Summer's never over at Foxwoods. For more details about all the entertainment you can find at Foxwoods, go to foxwoods.com. Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. You can purchase a digital download of tonight's game or any of our live broadcasts at Vimeo On Demand. For details, head to vimeo.com slash on demand slash game day CT. We have an invitational champion, Lyman Bulldogs. Coach, talk a little bit just about playing here at Mohegan Sun. Um, the girls were super excited to be here at Mohegan. Um, it's, it's like the state tournament feel all over again. So we practice with music and get the girls amped for this. They thrive on this type of situation. Um, so I think just getting the opportunity as a small, class S small school um, to come play here was just super awesome. Walking in off the bus, the girls were just amazed at the, the whole setup. I mean, they got the lights for us, the whole introductions, just the whole feel, using the locker room. Um, they're having so much fun. It was such a great opportunity and we came out on top, so I, I couldn't be more proud of them. Well, you had a great first set. You kind of dominated, got on some runs, and you seemed like every time they would start a little momentum, you did a great job ending it. But they're so resilient, and then set two and set four, you know, they kept coming back. Just talk a little bit about your message to your guys to keep them in it going into that last fifth set. Yeah, um, going into the last fifth set, especially since it was only 15, we talked right out the get-go, uh, coming out with the serve and coming out strong and aggressive, and then Carly did just that with her first serve. Um, and resilience, like you said, signing out on serve receives and never giving up. Um, especially in a set to 15, I pushed with them getting two points at a time. It's so it's so short and it's back and forth and back and forth. Um, and I think our serve receive really saved us in that. And our uh, Carly and Cassidy, my two outside hitters, stayed aggressive the whole time, which is what we needed. We, we needed to not give them free balls and we needed to put the ball away. So that's what we talked about and being positive and just continually talking to each other um, really helped us uh, come through in that end. It was a week ago where you had your only three set match of the year against East Lime. Now a week later, you come back with another three set. Uh, did that prepare you a little bit for this? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially being a class S school, we, we, we don't have a lot to choose from, right? So we come out and we put all the girls out there that we can. Um, I think having a five set against East Lime helped us endurance wise and the girls continued to fight. I know they got tired here and there. We call a timeout, we refresh, recharge, um, give them a break. Um, but I think in the end, their resilience, their drive, um, their demeanor, their positivity with, with each other is really what helped us pull through in the end. Coach Emily Vigu and the Lyman Memorial Bulldogs, your champions, big five set win over Ledger. Thank you so much, Coach. Yes, thank you. All right. All right. Player of the game, Senior Cassidy Latour. First of all, let me just start with a very simple question. How does it feel playing here at Mohegan Sun? It's crazy. I would have never thought that I'd be able to play here. But it's my first. I've I had never played volleyball coming into high school. Well, besides middle school, but it wasn't really that big. But it's crazy to be here. So, Ledger, very scrappy, didn't go away. You guys, you know, went to the five sets. Talk a little bit about where you have to dig deep in a in a fifth set match. Where do you get that energy from, and, and how do you focus in those five sets? Um, I think each other. We were all trying to pick each other up no matter what happened. Like, if somebody were to make a mistake, we would just be, it's fine. We can get it next time. It's just, we have to reset and just keep on going. 16 kills. That's an awful lot. And you did it in a lot of different ways. You had some rockets. You also had some nice touches. Uh, also, a brilliant left hand on the side for, for a point. Well, you know, talk a little bit about just your performance tonight, what you felt early on, and how you feel like you finished. Um, 
I wasn't feeling great in warm-ups, so I was kind of scared going into here, but I think everybody kind of helped me in that whole thing. Like, everybody was picking me up, and I made a mistake. Everybody was there, so. So a five-set victory. This is your second five-setter in the last week. This time you came out on top. Is this the kind of a game that can build momentum the rest of the way for you? I think so. This is going to be the start of a win streak for us. She's the player of the game, Cassidy Latour. Congratulations. All right.
The following is a presentation of The Day. We are live at Mohegan Sun Arena. It's game two of the Day Volleyball Invitational featuring the 9-3 East Lime Vikings and the 7-5 Fitch Falcons. And it's all live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that is good begins with a smile, and when you visit their office, your smile is their top priority. Their team is dedicated to providing you the gentle and personalized care that you deserve, so contact them today, waterforddentalhealth.com. Casey O'Neill along with Madison Canestrari, and we are here for game two. Uh, the big schools taking center stage, East Lime and Fitch. Of course, in our opener tonight, a fabulous five set back and forth between Lyman, who ultimately prevailed over Ledger. And in this one, uh, East Lime, I think, who fancies themselves as perhaps the class of the larger part of the ECC, taking on a, a Fitch team that, uh, quite honestly, is hard to figure out when you see who they've beaten and who they've lost to. But uh, definitely uh, bigger schools, and the competition should be good tonight in game two. Uh, off the bat, you know, we talked about East Lime, Skylar Bell uh, of the Bell family, volleyball players, a family that you're familiar with and you are familiar with Skylar as well. Yes, so Skylar plays at Husky Volleyball up in South Windsor, club volleyball, which is awesome. She's been one of the top players there for quite some time and I've actually got to play against her a little bit as a coach, which is really fun. She's defensively very solid. On the other side of things, Fitch, uh, look, we talked about back and forth. They've uh, had some good wins. Um, they prevailed over uh, the Lyman team that we just talked about in a three-set match. They lost, excuse me, Fitch lost to Lyman, and East Lyme beat Lyman 3-2. to two. But Fitch uh, had a big win over Bacon Academy. Uh, Fitch beat Waterford. So Fitch fully capable of beating good teams. The question is, which Falcon team do we get tonight? Uh, Anna Cahill and uh, Katie Tui, two very good hitters. And we're very excited about all the action. Let's go to PA announcer Bill Glennie here at the Sun. Game number one was a five set thriller won by Lyman Memorial. Game number two features the visiting Vikings of East Lyme High School. And the home side, Fitch Falcons. Before we introduce tonight's lineups, I'd like to direct your attention to the big board for the day's presentation of today's players. Ariana Spera, Salem School. Skylar Bell, Salem Elementary School. Shay McMunn, Flanders Elementary School. Chloe Baglio, Louis B. Haynes Elementary School. Lillian Bresh, Regional Multiculture Magnet School. Mia Williamson, Salem Elementary School. Abby Perulis, Nyanic Center School. Avery Stadler, Flanders Elementary School. Addison Solo, Flanders Elementary School. Megan Nagel, Satoka Elementary School. Carolyn Place, Regional Multicultural Magnet School. Ava Kelly, Salem School. Finley Wilson, Flanders Elementary. Sydney Lapham, Niantic Center School. Haley Miller, St. John School. Leanne Walker, Rose Home School. Madeline Fancher, Emma Love Elementary. Amelia Levering, Northeast Academy Elementary School. Isabella Dittmore, Charles Barnum Elementary School. Tessa Cantone, S.B. Butler. Alan Cahill, S.B. Butler Elementary School. Lanaya Ragland, CKMS. Katie Tui, Catherine Konowski Magnet School. Dabri Arana, Central Elementary School, Philippines. Trinity Sweat, Northeast Academy. Makayla Curry, Tokoa Elementary. Juliet Georges, Pleasant Valley Elementary. Elena Hafley, Hidden Creek Elementary, Washington. Camille Monsale, Catherine Konowski. Maddie Aldinger, Catherine Konowski Magnet School. The visiting Vikings beat Coventry Thursday night to enter tonight's contest with a record of nine and three. They head out on the road Friday for a 5.30 match at Woodstock Academy. 
The head coach of East Lyme is Mr. Jack Biggs. Here we go, Viking Valley. Let's meet your squad. Number one, a junior, Ariana Spera. Number three, a junior, Skylar Bell. Number six, junior, Lily Brush. Number seven, a junior, Mia Williamson. A sophomore, number nine, Avery Stadler. A senior, number 12, Megan Nagel. A junior, number 17, Ava Kelly. A freshman, number 21, Finley Wilson. A junior, number 28, Haley Miller. And your starting lineup, a senior, number four, Shea McMunn. A senior, number five, Chloe Vaglio. A sophomore, number eight, Abby Perulis. A junior, number 10, Addison Solo. A senior, number 13, Carolyn Place. And a senior, number 25, Sydney Lopham. The home sided Falcons beat Granby on Friday night, currently at 7 and 5 on the season. Up next, a road trip to NFA on Friday night at 5 30. The head coach is Miss Elena Lockett, assistants Emily Gramaglia and Jen Sim. Stand up and clap, Falcon fans. Let's meet your team. A senior, number one, Leanne Walker. A senior, number two, Madeline Fancher. A senior, number four, Amelia Lovering. A senior, number 11, Lanaya Ragland. A senior, number 22, Debria Arana. A senior, number 25, Michaela Curry. A junior, number 26, Juliet Georges. A senior, number 28, Elena Hafley. A sophomore, number 37, Camille Monsell. And your starters, a junior, number six, Isabella Dittmore. A junior, number eight, Tessa Cantone. A senior, number nine, Annalyn Cahill. A senior, number 18, Katie Tui. A uh, junior, number 23, Trinity Sweet. And a senior, number 55, Madeline Aldinger. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's anthem is being performed by the Fitch High School Chamber Choir.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Fitch High School Chamber Choir. All right, we are moments away. The nine and three East Lyme Vikings, the seven and five Fitch Falcons. Fitch, coach Elena Lockett in her second season. East Lyme coach Jack Biggs in his 25th season. Hard to believe since Coach Biggs doesn't even look like he's 25 years old. <laughs> the overhead shot, brilliant as the players get ready to go. They are fired up. And you see the Vikings in the black shorts with the pink tops, the maroon. They are playing uh, today for uh, cancer. They have the pink. And the Falcons in the black and red as they huddle up and get ready to go here at Mohegan Sun. Falcons, of course, big hitters, Tui, Cahill, excellent. They are uh, an interesting team when you take a look at them. They've beaten Waterford, which is a team that has done, you know, we know is a very solid team. Uh, and they beat Waterford twice. They lost to Griswold, they lost to Lyman, they've lost already to the East Lyme team. They've lost to Woodstock, but they beat Bacon Academy. They they beat the Ledger team we saw, uh, excuse me, they lost to the Ledger team we saw, and I think that's the loss that's kind of confusing for them, uh, because prior to that, you know, Griswold undefeated, Lyman, uh, multiple state champion, East Lyme, nine and three. The loss to Ledger, I think, is a little confusing, but they have beaten good teams, Waterford twice, and Bacon Academy. On the other side of things, East Lime, Newtown, Griswold, and Woodstock, their only losses. Uh, and they've already beaten this Fitch team. They've also beaten Bacon Academy twice. So East Lime, I think, the favorite. But I think what Fitch has shown is that uh, if the right Falcon group shows up tonight, we could have ourselves a contest. So East Lime will serve Skylar Bell. Right off the bat, there we are. And Cahill with the first chance for a Fitch. Setting up Tui. Bell into the net, and the first point of the game belongs to the Falcons. Tui will get the serve. Falcons, a senior-laden team. Ten seniors on the Falcons. And Tui, strong serve, back line. Set for Bell. Now looking far side to Cahill. And what we got for a call? Sergio made that call. What was the... Looks like a lift. Pretty interesting from East Lyme right now. Um, their three attempts are all from Skylar Bell, their libero. She's not even supposed to be the one hitting the ball. So it looks like they might be struggling a little bit as far as passing, trying to get adjusted. Cahill sails long, and the Vikings even things up at one. And they will continue. Shea McMunn has the serve, the senior for East Line. Bell, McMunn, Vaglio, Perulis, Solo, Place, and Lapham for East Line. Good serve. Great pass. Back to Cahill. And that's a big hit. Nice dig. Other side. A put away from Perulis. And it's a 2 1 East Line lead. No, they gave that to Fitch. They gave it to Fitch. How did they give it? Uh. Looks like it was a net violation. Net violation, okay. So Fitch serve, Isabella Dittmore. And there's a kill from Carolyn Place. Right back to the Vikings. East Lyme will send Mia Williamson, the junior, back for her serve. Good serve by Perulis. Dumped that one in between the lines. And she'll get another one with Mia Williamson. Early 4-2 lead here for East Lyme. East 
East Line brought the cheering section today. Very nice job. Cheerleaders are here as well. Fitch in a blackout. High set. Nice check. Nice dig. Resetting. A little miscommunication there, but well played. It's a great run through set. A good set for Cahill. And Annalyn Cahill puts it away. Cahill's got that. And it, again, the person that gets the kill gets the serve. I don't know why this isn't a thing. <laughs> Cahill has what I consider to be, what I think of, you know, what the lay person thinks of as the volleyball build. She's the tall, lean, Slender. and she has the ability to get that high torque, you know, the long arms and get real uh, leverage. Her spikes look different. Right. She's spiking it at that 45 degree angle right. down, where a lot of these girls are spiking it at it's a much shallow, yeah. That's a lift. And so the point, East Lime turns it over here. It's an early lead for the Vikings, 6-3. Yeah, so Brush right there as the setter, she brought her hands down and kind of caught that ball before she let go of it. So they call that a lift. Fitch needs to stop this little run from East Lime right now. It's 6-3 in the early going, and a nice point there. Daglio dropped it in as no one was home on the back line for Fitch. 7-3 Vikings. So Carolyn Place will continue to serve for East Line. Oh, good serve. That was a bullet. That nice Place. float serve. She thought she was lined up, and last minute, that ball just comes off the side of your arm, floating away. 5-1 run here in the early going for East Lime. That one sails long, and Falcons will get it back and have a chance here. Cut into an 8-4 East Lime lead. The serve will go to Trinity Sweat. The junior. And there's a winner for the Falcons. They cut in the lead. Sweat will have another serve for Fitch. Good serve again by Sweat. Who slime recovers. And a violation, and so there we go. Four hits, and it'll be back to Fitch again. Fitch got a little something going here with Sweat. Another good serve. Sweat's got that hard sinker. Mm. Nice kill from the Vikings. They'll get it back, and they maintain their lead. That time it was solo with a kill for the Vikings. A solo kill, if you will. <laughs> um, Aldinger miss hit. And the serve will go to Vaglio, the Vikings. Oh, put away, big time, lap him. That's a great turn by her. Most outsides like to hit right down that angle just because like that's the way their body's going. She turned her hips and hit right down that line. Wide open. 11-6 Viking lead. Oh, that's a beautiful play from Katie Tui. The senior recognized the opening and dunked it in. Get the ball back for the Falcons. Yeah, she had a double block up on her, right? That tip to four is always going to be open. Tessa Cantone, the junior, 
will have the serve for the Falcons. Solo kill for East Lime. East Lime clearly uh, the more adept team at celebrations. They have got, they've got them all. They've got them all ready. I've already seen three different ones from East Lime. Lap them with the serve. And long out of bounds it goes. And Fitch will get it back. Fitch kind of hanging around right now. Feels like East Lime is you know, controlling it, but yet only a four-point lead, and we see Cahill check back into the game for the Falcons. Bell, free slime. Now they're going to set Cahill up, and it was a miss hit. And like we talked about earlier, I mean, she could have lost that one in the light, kind of came between her hands a little bit. Worked. I had a chance in between games, actually. We talk, I talked with the athletic directors from Ledger and Lyman about what the girls were talking about. And it was very much what you had said. Uh, they said the depth perception was really difficult for them. The distance and the height was creating um, some depth problems long. And they said they weren't used to the ball height right. that they were getting. Uh, and they Even said the just, sound. Yeah, it was very, they said it took them a while to really kind of figure things out. And we've got a timeout here, so we'll take a break. This timeout brought to you by the Burns Agency. It, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. 14 to 8. East Lime on top of Fitch here in set one. And Skylar Bell with the serve for the Vikings. Jump serve. And just sails long. That was right on the line, but just over. And Fitch will get it back in. Tui will have the serve for the Falcons. Yeah, breaking that East Lime run. They had a 6-2 run going. So Fitch cutting into the big lead of that biggest lead of the game so far. Tui with the serve. It's so strange for me to see a libero get set. Getting set for, yeah, and, and, and she's a power player, and that's just it's just a weird sight. You're not used to seeing that. But she's very comfortable from both back and front. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, to have that option in the back row if you're not getting the pass to set your front row hitters to just go to your libero like that and have Skyler have a nice controlled downspin like that. Shea Super McMahon helpful. with the serve now for East Lime. Yeah, it's just, a, just something we're not used to. It's just another tool in the toolbox that, you know, when things get tough, you can go to. And a kill for the Vikings. And McMunn will have another serve. That was Vaglio with the kill for East Lime. That's senior Chloe Vaglio. And senior Shea McMunn with the serve. Good serve, good dig. Setting up Cahill. And that one drops in front of the Falcons, and I think that's one they would like back. That was a you know, helpless ball it. floating in the air. 5-1 run for East Lime. That was a big hit by Cahill, and that ball was up for grabs. East Lime lucky to get that point. They're up 17-9 here in the first set. Uh, we got a violation. 
attention. So I'll turn it over here. The Falcons will have the ball and the serve to Dittmore. Dittmore, back line serve. And a nice heads up put away from Carolyn Place. And every time Fitch gets a point, he slime grabs it right back. Three kills so far for Place. Williamson East Lyme Williamson will have the serve. And a net serve will turn it back over, and Cahill will have the serve for the Falcons. If, 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 you know, if East Lyme's done anything wrong, they're up 18 11, it's four service there. Other than that, it's been all East Lyme. Cahill with the serve. Yeah, and I mean, you're going to see probably a little more service errors just because they have those hard, high-risk reward serves. Like, they're going deep. They're going hard floats. Fancher that time at the net with the stuff. And that'll get the block. We'll get it back to the Falcons, and Cahill will continue to serve. Adjustment, the ball was a little too tight, couldn't swing at that one. Tip to that Bermuda Triangle. Nineteen twelve. East Lime on top here in the early going, and Place will have the serve. Nice dig. That was a miss hit, and it worked. You can see Spider. <laughs> East Lyme will take it and place over a thousand in attendance tonight here at the Sun to witness the first day volleyball invitational. East Lyme with an early 2012 lead, and Fancher bangs that one long. And right now, East Lyme looking like if not the better team, the team that's playing better here to start it. And we're gonna get a timeout. And we will take this timeout as well. And this timeout brought to you by the Burns Agency. feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 we're back 21 12 east slime with the serve and a nine point lead here in set one you're watching game day live on the day.com the first day is volleyball invitational live from mohegan sun casey o'neill and madison canistrary and the vikings off to the early hot start fancher with the kill for the falcons and they'll get it back and they will have the serve. So down 21-13. See if the Falcons can make a little run. They'll give the serve to Trinity Sweat. Oh, and there's a kill from Sydney Lapham. That's her third of the night. And that goes right back. I mean, this is, again, what we saw in the first game between Lyman and Ledger. What East Lyman's done fabulously is every time Ledger, excuse me, every time Fitch has had a chance, they shut it down immediately, 
no runs, a point or two at most, and then right back. I mean, Fitch is doing a great great job serve receiving. They're passing these tough serves from Eastline pretty well. It just seems like they can't get anyone to put the ball away. But I mean, you have Bell on the other side defensively, and Eastline is just solid. Solo with the kill for East Lime, and they're just running away with this first set, 22-13. Everything going their way, Vaglio will serve for East Lime. Uh, well done by the Falcons, keep that one alive. Now Tui couldn't get it over there, and it's going to be a four hit, so it'll go back to East Lime. Tui was trying to dunk it over and just couldn't quite get enough on it. Vaglio with the serve chance here at set one. And Tui sails it long, so your first set goes to East Line, 25-13. And so, Skylar Bell, the Fighting Bell sisters, are no well-known East Lime volleyball. Let's learn a little bit more about her. My two older sisters, Alexis and Madison, were both All-State players. They played here at East Lime High School. Well, if you look back, uh, they've been part of our program for almost 12 years now, or by the time Skylar graduates will be 12 years. My oldest sister has been playing since freshman year of high school and my middle sister has been playing since eighth grade and I've been playing since I was five. I think probably about six or seven or eight possibly she was out on the court always peppering with her father in between sets and, and after games and run over the ball cart and grabbing a ball and, and um, and her skill level was, you know, she was about yay high, and she was probably better than half of our team at that point in time. Have you ever considered asking them to have more kids? Absolutely, I ask them all the time, and I just get a laugh. I think they're finished, but uh, I lo I'd love to see them come back year after year after this is all said and done, once Skylar graduates next year, and um, I know that they would have a, a positive influence on our, our program. Everybody definitely compares us on how good we are, what positions we are. We don't really compare each other. They support me a lot. They come to like all my games and they always wish me good luck. They were both really good players and it's hard to go up to their level. One match to win, which bell are you taking? I'm going Skylar all day. Okay. I think that Skylar has, uh, again, she's been around. Uh, the longest and I believe that she has that that toughness in her and that team leadership in her to like carry a team and, and hopefully you'll see that on uh, Monday night against Fitch. So what do you do when your sister wore number one and then your next sister wore number two and you're the third sister you wear number three? So there you go, Skylar Bell, the third of the Bell sisters, right in line, one, two, and three. And her Vikings have an early one set to nothing lead here in the day volleyball invitational. And I'm talking with Madison Canistrari. And what, you know, we talked a little bit about the uh, things that happen over this holiday weekend. And uh, this weekend is uh, you know, traditionally a place where, for example, East Lime, you said, would go and, and play in tournaments. Uh, so this is a great weekend for the for the day volleyball invitational. But uh, volleyball is in many places the fastest growing sport in high school. Uh, I'm hearing it from athletic directors and kids all over the place that volleyball is booming right now. Right. Schools that years ago may have only had a varsity team now have a varsity, a JV, a freshman, and, and they're making cuts. Yes, which is in, which is crazy to me because. Uh, schools that you know didn't even have volleyball programs, they couldn't get enough kids out. Now volleyball is stealing from soccer. It's stealing from, I say stealing, but kids are choosing volleyball, Over where soccer. in the past they would have, you know, soccer would have been sort of the only fall sport, or maybe you're gonna run and cross Field country, hockey. right? Or, but now volleyball seems to be drawing in a lot of kids. Um, talk about where you see volleyball now from when you were in school. I mean, you haven't been going that long, but it's been a few years. It's been a few years, yeah, I mean, 
just from when I started. I started as a freshman in high school. I'd never played volleyball a day in my life, and there weren't really camps or anything offered. And now you see, I know, just from like family members in the school system, they have Ledger now has a middle school program where you can go and play volleyball. That was never an offer. Like I don't even know if we played it in in gym class and now it's something that you totally see all over and there's so many clinics and at Adelphi we used to go to churches, CYOs, and teach them how to play volleyball. Well you see the level of play as we start set two and Dittmore with a serve for the Falcons and immediately you got Solo with the kill right back east line and Fitch has no answer for Solo. Uh, the level of play now is noticeably higher than the level of play from a few years ago. Uh, there are, and I think you just mentioned it, right? So we, we, each sport that ramps up, I saw this with soccer, both girls and boys soccer, about five years ago, where I noticed that all of a sudden, you know, 500 teams, uh, not even the elite teams in the league, but 500 teams, uh, every kid, could, could, had proficiency with both left and right foot. Mm -hmm. And every kid had all the different skills. And I said, wow, it, it's really, you know, the level, level of play just jumped. We did volleyball a few years ago. I remember going back five, six years ago to my own, you know, uh, watching volleyball. The level of play is elevated. More girls can do more things than we've seen before. And that's honestly how it's, the training has changed that way between clinics and you're not specializing so much until a lot of these girls are now playing in club. I know Skyler plays at Husky. Uh, Annalyn Cahill was playing at South County over in South Kingston, Rhode Island. Like club volleyball is something that these girls are now playing and they're getting all those extra reps and touches. And they always say 10,000 hours to master something. That's a Malcolm Gladwell. And you saw Bell, they got East Lyme to a four nothing lead here. Trying to set up Cahill. In the case Cahill and Bell two players we mentioned before. And there's a kill by Perulis. And East Lime is off to a hot start here in set two. But you know, it's, I think the difference between an East Lime team and a Fitch team, what I'm noticing here in the early going, is that is the best players on Fitch, the two or three best players on Fitch, are standouts as well. I mean, they can play. But you're seeing the depth on Fitch Absolutely. Not quite what you see on the depth on East Lyme. Cahill with the kill. And we, of course, know that when a player gets a kill, they get the serve. The fact that you all have never have never said this is, is mind-boggling to me. <laughs> but well, so where Fitch maybe has a weakness or a hole for a girl that's not quite there yet, East Lyme doesn't have that. They've got right. a really solid They're very well-rounded. I mean... You see, I think Solo has four kills now. Place and Lapham both have three each, and it's just one of those things. They're well-rounded. They don't go to the same player over and over and over again. They can set somebody, and they're going to almost guarantee a kill. And where two, you know, where uh, Tui and Fancher are both good, really Cahill is the person for Fitch if they're looking for if they're looking for a kill. Nice job by Tui keeping it in, and Fitch will stay alive here. It's a great set. And sailing long that time was the attempt from Place, and so the Falcons will have it trailing 6-2 in the early going, and Trinity Sweat will have the serve. But yeah, the level of play definitely increasing as more girls play volleyball, as they play it year-round, as they get camps and clinics and better, you know, better coaching from the college ranks. Uh, I expect volleyball to continue its place oh, on the rise. Play. Absolutely. And it's one of those things that's just fun. It's fun to watch. You get momentum. A great block that time by Tui. Katie Tui, the senior. I'm going to say two things in a moment that's going to really make me, uh, well, my age is going to come clear, and you're going to realize how old I am because I'm so youthful. Weak side, Fancher. And there's a kill nice for snap. Fancher. So, I've known Katie Tui's dad for 40 years. Uh, I was the bat boy on the team that he played on, because he's older than I am. The great Barry Tui. And there's a kill 
A put away from Perulis. But even more concerning is that I, by full disclosure, my dear friend, uh, Anna Cahill's mom, uh, Miranda and I go back 35 years. And man, does that make me feel old. <laughs> I was younger than Anna was when I met her mom. Nice rally here. Bell keeps it going for East Lime, looking for a setup to Fancher. And that's a double hit. We'll turn it back over to East Lime here. So, you know, when you start feeling your age and you start, man, I'm getting old, I laugh and I laugh. <laughs> Williamson with the serve for East Lime. And Tui couldn't get to that one. That set was a little too close to the net. And right back to East Lyme. And I continue to say East Lyme, the thing that I'm most impressed by is how they kind of really refocus when they lose a point and get the serve goes over to Fitch, how they really refocus uh, to not allow runs to happen. It takes a lot of discipline. And I'll credit Jack Biggs with that one. I'm sure he does a lot of different drills like that and pushes that into their heads because you can't. You, Got to kill it right in the bud. Well, as a longtime baseball coach, uh, you know, Bigsby and I have talked about, and there's some similarities in, in, in baseball strategies, kind of sensing, you know, how to quell rallies. You know, and a rally in baseball has a, a feel to it. You can't always, t you just, if you play long enough, you can tell. And I think there's something to be said, the same thing with volleyball, kind of knowing without, you know, you can't put a, a number on it. It's not always when it's a three point lead. It's just, there are times you can feel something different. It's like that in right. basketball as well, where you feel the run coming, you feel the momentum coming, and you gotta clamp down and do whatever you can to kind of make that uh, that momentum end. Good serve great from pass. Cantone. Good oh, great coverage. And Tui with a kill for Fitch, and Fitch has got a little something brewing, in part because of the good serves from junior Tessa Cantone. Deep serve from Cantone, Bell digs, and <laughs> oh, good job on the floor. Fancher, strong hit, weak side. Oh, Bell is tricky, and a <laughs> nice play, but the Falcons get it as Bell's shot just sailed long. One of the things I love was uh, when the girls, when we, we did their, we uh, gave them the opportunity for their intros, when they said their names and the school they were from. You know, we've been doing that with basketball for a long time, but these volleyball girls, this is their first time with an opportunity for that kind mm -hmm. of, thing, you know, that kind of pregame stuff that game day does. And so, for some of them, they knew exactly what we were talking about because they'd seen the, the boys do it. For the others, they were like, no, what are you talking about, intros? Uh, and some of them were, you know, were, were so terrified of it. Bell, so athletic. Some of them were terrified of it. It was cute. And others were like, this is my chance. This is my Disney moment. This is my chance to absolutely <laughs> shine. What a great rally we got going on here. And one of the girls who absolutely did not shy away from it as the kill from Lapham was Tessa Cantone. She just had this bright big smile on her face and said, all right, tell me where to go. Where am I, where, I'm standing here, let's go. Get that camera on me. <laughs> so back to East Lime and Place will serve as the Vikings have a two point lead and that was the best rally we have seen in this game. And I feel like Fitch is settling in a little bit here in the second set. Yeah, a little bit of an adjustment. That first set jitters in the big arena and everything. Figuring out East Lime. Uh, they just need to limit the amount of free balls they're sending over. So when they're bumping that ball over, they're giving way too easy of an opportunity for East Lime to give an easy pass to their setter, and that's why they, they're getting those kills. Fancher that time was denied on her first one. Second one sailed long, and it'll stay with East Lime, and Place will have another serve with an 11-8 lead for the Vikings. That's a bullet of a serve from Place. Well done from Lapham. She's got it all going today. She's got the hard spikes and the soft dunks. 
Man, I like that serve place, that low. A nice deep float. Line drive and another one here. Now East Lyme on a little bit of a run. Opened up a 13 to eight lead here. Fitch needs to quell this immediately. Four in a row here for the Vikings. Right on cue. Timeout taken by Fitch and Elena Lockett. And with this timeout, we will take a timeout. It's sponsored by the Burns Agency. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Mugging it up for the camera, the Falcon faithful, they got a blackout going here at Mohegan Sun. The sun always shines even when there's a blackout. East Lime serving Carolyn Place with she of the rocket serve and a five point Viking lead here in set two. East Lime on top, one nothing here over the Fitch Falcons. And that time Sweat couldn't get it up over the net and Place is on a little run here for East Lyme. That's five in a row for Caroline Place. Oh, and another winner. That was, uh, I think, Fitz thought it was, out. yeah. I thought they think they thought it was gonna go out and then they had that little last second change of heart. And East Lyme, back to a seven point lead. Place continues to put Fitch on the defensive See, with her serve. Thank you. Oh, heads up play, Chloe Vaglio. Into the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> and that is a eight point lead, biggest lead of the set for East Lime. I think that's your new favorite turn you learned tonight. <laughs> that and donut, donut hole. <laughs> the donut hole. And finally, service error from Carolyn Place, but not until after she ripped off the big lead here as East Lime with a seven point lead. And Fitch will send Maddie Aldinger in to serve, the senior. I think if there's one person you want to avoid your serve going to on East Lime side is Skylar Bell. Mm -hmm. And there's a rare error by Bell into the net. Falcons will have the serve down 16 to 10. Aldinger with her next opportunity. There you serve. go, that's a better serve. That was good, line drive. See that, she went towards someone besides Skylar Bell, you're gonna get a different pass. Ends up in an ace. Fitch trying to cut into this lead. That's three in a row. Another great serve at the feet of Vaglio. Here comes Cahill. Oh. That's a great rep. That was a great set. Put her in perfect position. And that's that angle we talked about. Look how high up Annalyn Cahill gets. Not only that, but she's turning down that line, which is wide open. Four straight for Fitch. They got it to 16-12.
Oh, that's an awesome serve. A little change up that time from Aldinger. See if they want to set up Cahill again. This time it's Tui. Solo covering her own block touch. Now they go to Cahill and a little touch. Set was a little too close to the net. Mm -hmm. And there's Tui with the block. Fitch got a little something going here. Now it's 16-13. And a timeout, Jack Biggs wants to talk it over. He sees East Slime's lead cut to three, 16-13, we'll keep it here. What are you seeing differently from Fitch here that's helped them cut into this lead? They're passing a lot better. Um, as far as serve receive, they're getting, they're able to set their offense where that first couple of points, they're sending all those free balls over to the back row, and East Lime's just saying thank you. Free balls are those balls that are super easy, you know, you're bumping them over or setting them over, like just lobs, and you're able to pass them easy, and you get them right to your setter, like you don't have to try really hard to read where it's going, you're just passing it. They're setting up their offense on East Lime's side, and they're just crushing that ball. So seven straight points for East Lyme. Got them out to that big 16-8th lead, and now Fitch right back with five straight. So two massive runs. Uh, but the Falcons aren't done yet, as they uh, still have the serve. And Aldinger, I love what she did, change of pace off of the serves. Yeah, that's awesome. And at this age, it's awesome to see that she has that in her toolbox, because most players don't have a change-up like that. I mean, they have areas where they can go deep in certain spots, but to have that short serve. Uh, that was a lift. They were, trying, yep, they were setting up Cahill, but I even saw that one. That was the carry. I got the, that one was apparent. <laughs> so even yeah. for the layperson. So Vaglio will have the serve for East Line. So we here at game day always love to respond to our fans and answer questions whenever we can. So, uh, fan Riri in Florida asks, do you have to hit the ball three times before it goes over the net? And the answer is no, you do not have to hit it three times, but you can only hit it three times unless one of those touches it's is a block. block. So you can block it and then hit it three times. Correct. There's a big kill on the far side by Solo. So if you block it, that's five kills for Solo. So if you block it, you then get three hits to get it over the net after the block. Right, so that's the advantage of even putting up, I mean, putting up a block because you're slowing down. If you get that block touch, instead of having someone like Annalyn Cahill just hit it straight down easily, she's got to look a little bit more and work a little bit harder and those block touches slow down that hard speed shot. There's points, now Lapham on the serve for East Lyme with a 19-14 lead. A good serve. See, there's this free ball that East Lyme's very good at capitalizing on. Fitch does a great job of saving it, but another free ball. And a block. Falcons will get it back. Block from Arana. Debria Arana with the block. The senior gets it back, and the Falcons will send Gitmore for the serve. Solo that time denied, and the Falcons with the point. One thing I've been very impressed with is East Lime's serves have, almost everybody has been a very solid serve. Mm -hmm. uh, hard and, you know, with... Nice, deep, close deep, Yeah. Oh, what a nice kill from Perulis. The other thing that East Lime has is Solo and Perulis on either side as outside hitters, with Vaglio as well. They've got a lot of options. We're not even talking about Bell, who, you know, plays all over the place, but they have a lot of options. They can go either side uh, effectively. This time, it's Solo's turn. She rips one long, 
And the Falcons have cut this thing 19-18 despite the timeout from Fitch. And now the, the Falcons, excuse me, the timeout from East Line. The Falcons on a little run here, and Dittmore will serve again. Nice deep serve. Setting up Perulis, and she chunked that one into the net, and we're tied at 19. What a nice run here from the Falcons. 5-1 run. A little too far off the net to tip. This time setting up Solo, blocked from Cahill. No, no. just in the net. In the net. East Line's panicking a little bit. A lot of unforced errors on their part. And I mean, another that's two back out. to back. You yeah. had a tip into the net and now a swing into the net. So another timeout from East Lime. Coach Jack Biggs wants to talk about it as surprisingly, Fitch with a 20 to 19 lead. This is their first lead of the set. And it feels like their first lead of the night. I mean, it's, it feels like they were playing from behind from the get go, but a really nice job of the Falcons of coming back. That's uh, the resiliency here. They trail 6-1 and all the way back from that deficit. And I did think honestly at 6-1, I thought they were gonna be you know, behind all night. Uh, we got a little, little Bruno Mars got the crowd going. Everyone loves themselves on a Jumbotron. And it amazes me. Family. It amazes me, however. Just like it amazes me that at weddings, how synchronized dancing automatically happens whenever a certain song comes on. It amazes me that when you see yourself on the Jumbotron, you must point at the Jumbotron to acknowledge, hey, that's me up there. Oh, great dig, Aldinger. Ah, uh, but Arana couldn't get it over the net. And finally, East Lime back with a 2020 tie and Skylar Bell. Oh, what a break. What a break off the net. And that took all the steam off the ball in a 21-20 Viking lead. And that's how you know your things are not going your way when the ball hits the net <laughs> and goes on the other side. Another inch and that's, you know, that's a service error. Right. Cahill. Stuffed at the net, That's, that was a little too close, she couldn't get there. And just like that, East Lime on top. One of those things where the timeout was the perfect time to call it. East Lime coming out of this timeout and really, <laughs> another one being called. <laughs> another timeout, this time by Falcon coach Elena Lockett. And with this timeout, we'll take a timeout, sponsored by the Burns Agency. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 19. Sailing long from the hit on Lovering, and after finding themselves giving up a huge lead, East Lime all the way back, four straights got them up 23-20 with a chance to close out set number two. There's a set, oh, and place into the net. Break for the Falcons. They'll take the serve, it'll go to Cahill. 23-21 and Cahill will serve. Oh, beautiful touch. The dunk from Abby Perulis and it's set point 
East line. Shea McMunn will have the serve set point here for the Vikings. And McMunn net 25-21 set two goes to East line. We're gonna find out if the Falcons can rally here in set three. Madeline Fancher of the Falcons has moved around an awful lot, but she's found a home here with this Falcon family. Let's learn a little bit about her. I started playing in sixth grade and I, wasn't, I was really shy when I first started. And I think volleyball helped me gain a lot of confidence as a person and that's why I really love the sport. Yeah, I'm a military kid. So where have you been? Um, I've been in Florida, Virginia, here, Georgia. It's, it's pretty hard to make new friends all the time and it's definitely an adjustment, but coming here they were really welcoming and this was probably the first time I really felt like I belonged on the team and they're really like a family to me. Well, Maddie's been with the program for four years and uh, she just brings a lot of energy. We've used her in quite a few positions and she's always welcome to any challenge. Um, she just gets along with the kids, she's coachable, she's just an all-around great kid. Really, it just goes beyond volleyball and, you know, I think the, the girls, you know, Maddie goes to the science school and, you know, and uh, just kind of weaving her way into becoming a Falcon as well. I mean, it just, it's a testimony to the kids and, you know, how they're athletes, but they're also, you know, they're just caring citizens. And we, we kind of promote that at school, you know, citizens and then students and athletes. They were just really, there was no judgment, like they were all, always supportive, even if we made mistakes. And they're also always there for me, even like, it doesn't have to be about volleyball, like family or any problems outside of volleyball. They're always there for me. She's a talented volleyball player. She's, you know, she's, she's just a leader of the team. And that's really just emerged over the last few weeks, honestly. And she's learned to, to really be a force on the court. And, you know, we need her out there. You're watching Game Day and the Day Volleyball Invitational. And it's brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. Smile. And when you do, your smile can be someone's top priority. Who's Waterford Dental Health? When you visit their office, they're going to give you dedicated, personalized, and gentle care. You can contact them today. Get that great smile going at Waterford Dental Health. WaterfordDentalHealth.com. That guy's got a smile, and she's got it going. A little dancing, little smile. I love it. There's the point. Oh. Sometimes it's just... All you need to do is watch. Love the pink though tonight. East Lime came out. About 40 cheerleaders too, by the way, which makes me very happy. Got to see all the fans. So two sets to nothing. East Lime on top, 25-13 and 25-21 as the Falcons and the Vikings are dancing on the court as well. They're feeling good about their 2-0 lead here heading into set three. Start set three. East Lime up 2 nothing here in the day volleyball invitational live from Mohegan Sun. Casey O'Neill and Madison Canistrari as we are heading down the home stretch of what has been a very successful night here at Mohegan Sun as the attention shines <laughs> to girls volleyball. Mohegan Sun done a great job providing these kids with an opportunity that they wouldn't normally get and hopefully the start of more chances for ECC athletes, both boys and girls, to get the opportunity to play in an arena which has been dubbed the greatest arena in the world and I think there's some truth to the events here. Uh, Mohegan Sun, I mean, you know, think about the various things that you can, I've seen Kid Rock and Kiss 
and girls volleyball all here in the Mohegan Sun Arena. Yeah. I've seen REM. I've seen Barry Manilow. It would be awesome to see some CIAC volleyball in here. I could agree with you more. Bell with the serve to start set three. I'm gonna set up Cahill on the far side and Anna Cahill puts it away to start set three. A rocket for the kill. And Fitch jumps out one nothing. It'll be interesting how disciplined East Lime is. Are they the cutthroat team that says, let's finish this team, or up 2 nothing, Or do they, their backs aren't against the wall. Fitch is, they have some more pressure on them. So does Fitch step down where East Lime lets up a little? Good rally here. Setting up solo. Great turn. That was Perulis. They went the other side. Now Cahill setting up Perulis again. Looks like Fitch is kind of picking up on how she plays. She's got six kills, and now all of a sudden they're digging her. Bell from the back line. Perulis. And there's your kill, Abby Perulis. So that's her seventh of the night now. Talking with Lyman after their match, they were disappointed in exactly that. They felt that they let Ledger back into it. They dominated the first set, let Ledger back in in a close one, dominated the third set, let Ledger back in. And I said, you know, and their coach said anybody can win a fifth set. You know, that's absolutely once, you, once it's, it's only to 15. You know, things can happen. And, so the, the issue that they had was letting them back in. So to your point, East Lime right now would be better served finishing it here. Right. But it's one of those things that you kind of, it's a mental game. Volleyball, not only mental against your opponent, but against yourselves. And you think, oh, you know, we're kind of gliding through this game. It's, we're up to nothing. They kind of take their foot off the gas pedal a little bit. Shay McMunn with the serve for East Lime. And winner their point and they'll go up three to one. Well, it's all about mentality, right? Any sport has how you can look at things, and a lot of it has to do with the confidence that you bring to what you do as well. Sometimes, you know, you, you think from, the, from a negative side of things as opposed to a positive side of things. And right now, East Lyme, you know, they could be thinking, let's just close this thing out and go home right. as they jump up 4-1. If they're thinking, hey, we're up 2 nothing, so this set doesn't really matter, then you're going to find yourself in a fourth set. Right. They're just feeding uh, Cahill right well, now. I think you have to. And you see why she's a dominant player that she is, Anna Cahill, with the kill. And of course, she gets the serve. Because, well, if you've been watching, you know. It's that mentality though, you know, as a baseball player, uh, if I had two hits in my first two at-bats, the mentality can easily be, well, no matter what else happens tonight, I've had a good night. Mm -hmm. and, and as opposed to, hey, I could get four hits tonight. Right. You know, one's a, a positive, aggressive approach, one's a passive approach. Same thing here. Cahill, we know we will take an aggressive approach. She's a... Yeah, she just had a great kill, now a great ace. With a chance to bring this thing even here in this third set. Great helps that. Net ball from place. We're tied at four. And Fitch, which they've shown they are capable of. That run, they, they you know, East Lime overcame it in the second set, but Fitch, very capable of runs. Cahill with a serve. And Place sends that one long. And the Falcons jump on top. Just like we talked about Cahill's height and the angle on her spike, her serve is coming in at a different angle mm -hmm. than, the, than the kids are used to as well. Absolutely. And with the net service error, we're going to be tied up at five. And East Lime will take over its serve. And so Williamson will come in for the serve for the Vikings. The Vikings, after tonight, will take on Woodstock Academy who they lost to 3-2, so you know that they're gonna be looking forward to that game. As Fancher was denied at the net, and East Lime goes on top 6-5. That time, Place 
after her net error previously, makes up for it with a block. Williamson will have another serve. East Lyme looking to extend a one point lead here in set three. Sancher, nice with a kill. Not yet. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Never rule out Skylar Bell. That was a good 10 feet off the, you know, off the playing surface. And she got a touch. And she got a touch. Sweat will come in to serve for the Falcons in a 6-6 game. Nice job, Aldinger now on the other side. Bell. They're gonna look for Fancher, are the Falcons. Good rally here. Just a little too off the net for Tui. And finally, a kill from McMunn. And so, place will take her place. Hey, she didn't get the kill. That's correct. That's, it, ha it, well, it can't happen every time. <laughs> place has been a very good server so far for East Lime. There's another bullet Rocket. into the back row. Oh, Fancher with a big hit. Uh-oh. Oh, what a great, great play by the Falcons. Nice turn by Solo for that kill. Great job by East Lime, recognizing that Fitch was there, that their placement was out of whack because they were all going back for that ball and there was an open spot. So that was really good recognition, uh, not letting Fitch get back into their, you know, into their spots. Another serve for Place. Man, she absolutely has that serve going tonight. Oh, nice Ooh. job by Tui stuffing solo. But Lapham with a dunk. That was a big time block by Tui off a of solo and then nicely placed by Lapham. Her fifth of the night. Three point lead for East Lime and Place is feeling it with the serve. A little joust at the net. Oh, uh, that was a place, I don't think, uh, place really knew where she was and the communication didn't get to her in time because that was going to sail long. <laughs> Jack Biggs is just laughing at him. He's on the sideline looking. Look at Cantone will serve for the Falcons. Yeah, it's one of those things. If you're in the back row and you're reaching that high, chances are the ball's out. Tui with another block at the net. Deep serve from Cantone. Another block by Tui. That time place went deep. Fancher. In. Madeline Fancher dropping it right inside the line. Fitch will not go away. We're tied at nine. Cantone will have the serve for the Falcons. So you like all the celebrations. I do. What about all the little serving routines? Do you notice every player has their own little thing, kind of like a foul shot? Yeah, and I, and I kind of, that's exactly what I would have would equated to, but I'm used to that from, from like tennis, where everybody's got, you know, the the different, uh, how many times I bounce the ball, how many times mm -hmm. I wipe my my face on the sweatband. Oh, great I, swing. And I, that makes perfect sense to me, because when you're serving, you need to be in your own little, you know, your own little ritual, which mm -hmm. I completely get. Aldinger will serve for Fitch. 
as we're tied up at 10 here. Fitch trying to extend this thing an extra set as East Lyme with a 2-0 lead. Nice little setter dump. Tui. And a nice job. I think that was a just a mishit by Lapham into the net. But Tui has been remarkable at the net with her block so far. Yeah. She's getting up in front of everyone. Aldinger. Which that's the job of the middle blocker. You're jumping with every person. You're responsible mainly right away for the middle. Look at that ace. Uh, for your middle hitter, but if it doesn't get set, you're forced to go to either pin and try to get that block. So Fitch now has something going. 6-1 run for the Falcons, and Aldinger with the serve, and this time she dumps it in the net. Now, here's where East Lyme gets it back. Can they go on a little run? This is where Fitch has not been able to stop. to stop it. Right now, if Fitch can just get it right back again, they could get some momentum going, but Lapham will serve for the Vikings. Oh, skin nice the pass net. by Canto. Oh, Tui puts it away for the Falcons. Force your way through solo. And uh, who's serving? <laughs> Katie Tui will have the serve. Solo was trying to put it away now. Nice job by Cahill. Weak side Bell in the middle. Setting up Cahill. Blocked. Blocking is really becoming a huge part of this game tonight. All of a sudden in this third set, it's really lit up at the net as far as blocking. You've got some jousts on either side. Perulis went long. And a timeout, East Lime as Fitch with a three-point lead here in the third set, trying to extend things here. They're trailing two sets to nothing. East Lime 25-13 and 25-21. So Fitch inching closer in the second set. Now they've got a three-point lead. And things are kind of going their way here in set number three. And you're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Casey O'Neill and Madison Canistraria at the first day volleyball invitation alive from Mohegan Sun. Uh, game one went the way of the Lyman Memorial Bulldogs as they defeated uh, the Ledger Colonels in a great five set match. Here, we are right in the middle of set three, East Lyme on top, 2-0. So, you like the Bermuda Triangle donut hole. How do you feel about jousting? Uh, I was a big fan of the video game Joust. <laughs> so a Joust is when you have the ball basically at the top of the net and you have a player from each side trying to block. We call it a Joust makes perfect sense to me. Uh, the game, video game Joust involved people with swords on top of ostriches. <laughs> jousting one another. So Fitch has their largest lead of the night right now with a 5-1 run. See if they can keep that going. They're going to go to Cahill. Nice job, East Lime. They're going to go feed. A little tight. And we get a violation, and it's going to turn over to East Lyme. So there's the first part of getting back into it. They retain the point in the serve, and they're going to give it to Bell. See if she can make something happen here. Down two. Kay Hill. Miss hit that time from Cahill, and the Vikings are down within one. Skylar Bell with a chance to bring the Falcons and Vikings even as the Vikings trail by one, and what a great serve that time by Bell, but good dig by Cantone, and weak side set. They were looking for Perulis. Now they're engaged in a nice little rally. Oh, heads up play. Nice little setter dunk. Sneaky. So 
Obviously, setters are always setting up their attackers to get some kills, but sometimes they like a little bit of fame and glory too, so they'll go over on that second touch and call that a setter dump. And just like that, East Lime back on top, 15-14, as Bell has ripped off four in a row here for the Vikings. Great serve by Bell. That one ate up Cantone. Timeout taken by the Falcons as they're feeling it slip away here. 16-14. Maya Williams, Mia Williamson, and the rest of the Vikings on top. With this timeout, we'll take a quick timeout. Sponsored by the Burns Agency. feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 the Vikings looking to be pretty in pink tonight. They're up 2-0, and they have a little rally going on with Skylar Bell and the serve. Up two, make it three as Bell's got a little mojo going from the service line. And the Falcons the are on the run, yeah. Three aces. And a lot more digs. When in doubt, go to Cahill. That was a rip, but nice job on the dig from the Vikings, and they're gonna turn that into a win with Perulis. And right now, the momentum firmly on the side of East Line. Ooh. Hit the top of that tape and rolled over. And that was a net ball by Perulis, and Fitch will get it back. And they're running out of time here, 18-15, and they need some points. Dig by Cahill. And we're going to get a net violation and or Carolyn Place will get credit for it and it'll throw back over to East Line. McMunn with the serve and a four point lead for the Vikings. Big hit from Perulis. And that one dumped into the net by Cahill. Vikings extend the lead. They hit 21st. They're on their way. Nice job, East Lime though, that was a little extra. Double hit, turn it back over to Fitch. And the Falcons need Cahill to come up big here from the service line as they need to get back into this thing down 2016. She's got the serve to do it. Oh, no talk, Tui couldn't get there that in time. Great dig. So 
21-16, East Lyme here trying to get a little closer. They'll send Williamson. Good serve, Williamson. Fancher, partially blocked. There's that, that little dunk. Weak side, Fancher again. Good rally going on here. Tui, Fancher, and Fancher puts it away. And Fitch will get it back. They're not going to go away lightly. 21-17, and the Falcons will serve. Trinity Sweat will serve for Fitch. Bell with the dig. Big hit from Lapham. Ooh. And Lapham that time just trickled it out and Fitch has cut it to three. Vaglio. And that's long from place. She had a chance to serve out, but a little bit long, and now we're going to have it back over. And Fitch will give it to Cantone. Down three, Tessa Cantone with a chance to inch Fitch back a little closer here, trying to stave off elimination down 2-0. That's a big kill from Solo. Her seventh of the night. Solo's seventh kill of the night. She does a great job as a middle, turning to hit to the left side of the court. Most young players don't learn that right away. Baglio with That's a, a great, great serve. Great block. Oh, look at oh. Bell, but she got a little too much on it. That was just a heads up play. <laughs> yeah. So 23-20, Aldinger, who's been a very good server for Fitch. Very strategic in her approach. Look at Bell with a rocket. Cahill puts it away for the Falcons. A kill for Cahill, and the Falcons inch to within two. Aldinger, she's very good. She, she mixes it up, serves in different directions from different angles. Goes after Vaglio this time. Big hit from Solo. Now Cahill. Nice block, it slowed it down. Defense had an easier time. Setting up Cahill again. Oh, look Great at the dig by, by Bell. Bell. But it's a winner. Cahill gets credit. Falcons within one. When in doubt, feed your best player and your best offensive player and that's Annalyn Cahill, she is on fire right now for the Falcons. They've cut it to one, 23-22 East Lyme, and the timeout, Jack Big senses the momentum, and he wants to talk this over because East Lyme is still, if they can just get the serve back here, they can close this thing out in three sets. Absolutely, side out plus one, game's over. A 6-2 run here for the Falcons, and I give them credit, you know, you asked, how would they approach this third set? And, you know, they never quit, and they still have no quit in them. And East Lime now, I'm sure Coach Biggs is challenging them what we talked about. Like, do not let this thing get to a fourth set. You've got this right now. Absolutely. 
close it, and let's go home. And I wouldn't say it's anything on East Lime. It's more just a few more unforced errors on their side. And Fitch did a great job of adjusting and really playing different defense, and their block kind of came alive this set. Aldinger. Oh, and unfortunate. There's the service error giving East Lime a chance to win Match this thing point. now. They'll put it with Lapham, and they need one point. Southern Perulis. Oh, <laughs> look at it's that. It's a mental game. And now Fitch giving life. The window's open. Tui. But here you go. Is she good under pressure? You need one point, and then you're in extra innings. Deep serve. Bell, safe play. See if they set up Cahill. They do. Nice Great block. Great block by Solo. Bell's going to hit that one. I'm going to go to, back to Cahill. It's long. It's long. And the Vikings win 3-0 in a very good match. The third set, the best of them all. 25-13. 25-21. 25-23. What a great job here tonight in the first ever Day Volleyball Invitational. A 3-0 win for East Lyme over the Fitch Falcons. Coach Jack Biggs and company. Great win for the Vikings. We will have the presentation of the trophy to head coach Jack Biggs and the East Lyme Vikings. And of course, stay with us for the player of the game and the interview with head coach Jack Biggs. What a night here at Mohegan Sun. The day volleyball invitation. So let's see, Madison. What do we? So we had. What do we have for the Vikings tonight? An all-around game for them. I mean, Perillas with nine kills, Solo seven, Baglio and Lapham both had five kills each. They're just a well-rounded team that it doesn't matter who you set, you're almost guaranteed a kill. And I mean, you saw it too. You set Skylar Bell. She's in the back row, back row attacks. So I'm, I don't know if we kept stats on her, but she had some kills, I'm sure. And then Fitch, our tops were Fancher, Cahill, and Tui. Fancher and Cahill both with seven kills, and Tui with five. That's fitting. Water for Dental Health, the sponsor of game day. And the Vikings, nothing but smiles as they win their trophy in the day volleyball invitational. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be joined by Jack Biggs and our player of the game. We'll be right back. You're watching game day live on theday.com. After the game, we're going to find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. Summer isn't over at Foxwoods. Summer's never over at Foxwoods. For more details about all the entertainment you can find at Foxwoods, go to foxwoods.com. Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Game Day is calling all fans, players, parents, coaches. We want your best plays. Send us a video on any of our social media platforms of any sport, practice, or game, and we will consider it for our Plays of the Week. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. East Lime Vikings, a 3-0 win over the Fitch Falcons. I'm here with East Lime coach Jack Biggs. And the first thing, coaches, you've been here now 25 years, which since you look like you're 24, doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. But 
25 years coaching, have you ever had something quite like this at the Mohegan Sun? No, never. Uh, we're, you know, we're super excited to be invited to play here. Uh, we want to thank the New London Day and the Mohegan Sun for hosting us. It was a, a special night for all the players and all the coaches and all the fans, actually, to come in here and, and have an opportunity to play in a venue like this. You know, Falcons can present problems for teams. You know, they've got some good hitters. They've got, you know, a talented team. Uh, they got closer each time, but you were able to take some timeouts, talk a little bit. Talk a little bit about, in the second set especially, what you talked about when you took back-to-back -to -back timeouts during their run. Yeah, we just wanted to challenge our hitters. At, at one point, we got in that little lull. We had a lot of hitting errors, and we challenged them to just step up the last few points and, and finish plays, and that's what they were able to do. Um, and they stuck together as a team, and that, that pro proved for the, everybody there that they could play together. What are you looking for this event, this night, to do for your team moving forward? You know, moving forward, if you can play on a big stage like this, you can play pretty much anywhere, and hopefully they gain the confidence to play um, with the upcoming tournaments, the ECC and state tournament. And, and you know, we're sitting ten and three. We played a lot of tough competitions, and hopefully we can carry this on for the next two or three weeks. I think one of the biggest compliments we could pay your team is we had a really hard time picking our player of the game because everybody contributed uh, in a variety of ways tonight. Talk a little bit about that aspect of things, how balanced your team is. Yeah, for sure. If you look at the first week, and obviously we have Skylar Bell and we have uh, Shea McMahon, and they've been, you know, they're our main returners, but little by little, every week, you know, our outsides got better, our middles got better. Um, and, and what I love about this team is that they all accepted new roles this year. We have girls that were setters, now they're middle hitters. We had girls that were uh, hitters, now they're DSs. So they accepted their roles. Um, they knew they added value to our program and, and this team this year, and they knew moving forward they had to get better, and this is what they did every, each and every week. So I'm very proud of them. One of the players you mentioned, Skylar Bell, and something we talked about, uh, you never see uh, a libero play the way she plays. I mean, hitting from the back, we're all, you know, that's that's unheard of. She's making plays in ways that you just don't see at the high school level. What does it do to have a player like her out there? I mean, obviously, having her presence on the floor kind of calms everybody down. She's a gamer. She's always ready to go. She practices hard, and, and she's a great teammate, and I think all the players feed off of her energy, and if she goes, we go. Head coach Jack Biggs, 3-0 over Fitch tonight. Congratulations, coach. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to bring in our player of the game, Addison Solo. Now, I guess if it's a volleyball game on game day, a solo ends up playing well. You uh, you had a great night tonight. You guys won tonight. Just talk a little bit about playing here. Well, it was such a big change for all of us, and it was such a big adjustment, and it was just amazing to even come here in general. And I just love the atmosphere and like all the people who are sitting here from school and from and like parents. Everyone was just it was just a great time. Very balanced. You had kills from a bunch of different people. You know, you had a few yourself, but I think maybe the play of the game was at the end, a block on Cahill. She is such a powerful hitter. Talk a little bit about that block and overall what you saw from your team. Well, that block was definitely, <laughs> it was definitely a hard ball, but it was so, it was such in the moment that it felt very nice to finally block her. And our team overall today just did amazing. And I think we just had a lot of fun coming here and our team just, we did great. So they got a little closer each set. You found a way to hold them off. Do you think that this kind of contest in this kind of environment sets you guys up as you move forward in the season? Definitely. I think this, like, this stadium just proves that we could play anywhere and that we could do any, like, we could play where we want to and we could play well there, too. And we just have learned to adjust as we go. And it's really nice that we were able to learn how to do that. All right, no rest. You got to go to school tomorrow. So we'll get you out of here. Congratulations, player of the game. Wonderful win tonight. Thank you.